Jill just like stared. Hello! <laughs> Should we just all stare? Insert, insert cricket noise. This is the most boring <laughs> gift. That was the most boring gift. Someone's going to gift that, and it's just going to be a solid loop of you not moving. I'm okay with that. I'm okay I'm with okay that. With that. I, I think staring dead, dead eyed is always really funny. Yeah, that's true. Uh, those are my favorite pictures to take at parties. Is like, like parties where, where you're standing still. No, pictures where like parties where I'm like but having all a. Pictures are like that. You know no, that. I know, right? but like, like I like to look like I'm bored out of my mind at parties that I'm loving because there's an irony to it that's. This is, I don't know. I think that's fun to me. Thank you for reminding me about the Doctor Strange cloak I have to talk to you about later. <laughs> it's been a weird, it's been a weird week. Hi, everybody. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday Club. We are uh, with the originating members of the Wednesday Club, but now you're all members of it because you are watching our show. So welcome to our Golden Age. Our weekly <laughs> clubhouse meeting. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Everyone is <laughs> loopy weird. for some oh, reason. We're all a little loopy. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, I, I'm just like stumbling over the introduction. I don't know why. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome Howdy. to the show. My name is Matt Key. This is Talison Jaffe and Amy Dallin. Hello. Hello. Uh, and today we're talking about fantasy comics. Oh. Talison, now, why are we reason? doing that? Um, well, it's the... Um, 67th and one third, uh, six, five months and four day anniversary of Lord of the Rings, which I think is important. It should be. It's yep. not. I'm yep. just making that up. Yep. Oh, we had a so critical role comic book coming out today. Oh. I know. I should have Googled that. Well, it came yeah. out today. It's not coming out today. You use the wrong verb tense. It's, There's it came a tense out today. now. It has a brand new tense. Ha! <laughs> ah. It is out. It is out. out it and has come out. It is available on the Dark Horse app and on Comixology. I have well, in no way bought it on both. I. I. <laughs> I went to find it earlier today, couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. I typed in Critical Role, Vox Machina, looked at Dark Horse, couldn't well, there, find it. Yeah. Uh, it. Through Comixology, didn't even dawn on me to go to the Dark Horse website and look for it there. Yeah. I was just like, it's not a Comixology, I guess. There's it not a digital version both. of it? It is now on both. Uh, how did you, did you type in Vox Machina or Critical, Critical Role? I typed in Critical Role. I actually went to the Dark Horse section and typed in Critical Role because search, search, on, search on Comixology is always a little shaky. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it can be a little bit uh, of a of a of a problem, but I found it under the Dark Horse imprint on Comixology, and then I downloaded it, and I'm currently actually looking at it on the Dark Horse app, not on my Comixology yeah. app, for reasons that I. It's I'm not real really good. Sure. Yeah, good job, I'm really so happy. I, I, I haven't read it, Samson. so I can't I can't speak to it, but I want to hear. What do you think? I'm really happy about it, and You're I think it's comic. really cool, and and the color is really nice, and so, the dialogue is really witty, and I really like it. Is it? Is it the entire Vox Machina, or is it only a like couple of the characters? Vox Machina. I'm is never going to correct you. It's pretty funny. Is it Vox Machina? Vox no, yes. no, no. Yes. It's Vox yes. Whatever you say Vox is right. Vox Machina. I'm never going to. I will never correct you, even if you do it any way you say it. I will never correct you. No, but I need to know. Like, no, it, you don't. You're you're a perfect angel. Oh, uh, definitely. Like Scott says it's dang good. Vance 1982 <gasps> says it's also on Kindle. Jeff Ooh. says it is great. Uh, oh. There are some suggested pronunciations in chat. Uh, <laughs> Chandra, uh, who has given us the critter badges, says, if you haven't gotten the CR comic book, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it has been unleashed, says Tortuga Del Mar. Sea I'll, turtle. I'll also say um, um, that, and I want to say Liz Horn, I believe, on Twitter. Uh, Liz Horn sent us a fan, a piece of fan mail, by the way. Uh, to uh, It was to Hector, Amy, and everybody else at the Wednesday Club. Uh, and she was a big, uh, just to paraphrase, was a, a, a a fan of comics through the 90s and the animated shows and wanted to make yeah. sure that Hector had a copy of these encyclopedias of of animated goodness. Aww. Uh, so Aww, people love Hector. So as soon as he breaks through the, the, the security line, which is uh Let him go! Let him, he needs let his him go, Liz! He needs to get these! And shows off his awesome shirt. It's an awesome shirt. Oh, that is Look at that shirt. Just, where's, your, where's your mullet, Superman? Mm. Yeah. You need a little. I'm back from the dead. I gotta go out. <laughs> <laughs> you need to follow that up with like the ice and and lightning outfits. And you gotta read that. It's a great little. Mm, so sweet. Uh, thank you so much, Liz, for this. It's as someone who also came to comics through all the '90s animated shows. I'd like you to have these books that kept my interest in superheroes alive until I had enough money to buy my own comics. Oh, that's Wednesday awesome. Wednesday Club has been my little ray of positivity since I've been going through a rough patch for a while. Best, Liz Horan. Well, our best to you thank you yeah. so much our best to you we don't like we don't want you to go through a bad time no although I'm glad you're here 
here. We're glad you're here, and thank you for 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 reading along and remembering great books with us, and and being ridiculous, and, and hopefully and we're not driving you into the brink of poverty with all the books we're recommending. And we're we're Letters. honored to be a ray of positivity for you in a time that's not easy for you. I'm sorry about your, what, for whatever you're going through. And if you, like right? if you like comics, but you're on a budget, good way to do it. You get encyclopedias like this. This is like having the complete series of these cartoon shows, right? Yeah, really. You guys is. missed out on the encyclopedia. Oh man, I you love missed out on awesome. Burning Man. I love DC <laughs> Who's Who. So, like the Who's Who were so much. I know, I know, I know. I know. Hope you guys uh, had a good time burning uh, it up. See you later. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye, Mullet Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for those. Yeah, that's that a amazing. very sweet gift. Thank and, you. Yeah. I love that shirt so much. I'm yeah, it's a, to, yeah. You steal it from Hector. Oh, while well, he's in his Star Trek uniform, I'm just gonna like quietly sneak in and grab he it. He wears it under a Star Trek uniform. Damn it! Every week, it's a Superman shirt. I'm not under that. that good of a thief yet. I'm working <laughs> you, on you it. You need to work I'm just on your skill tree. I'm reading all your happy reviews of the Kurt Roll comic. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm so glad everybody's enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it through the dialogue. I couldn't be happier with. So, wh what I'm, was the actual story in this one? It's like, our, it's our, where's it's kind the plot of a, coming it's from? It's kind of an origins episode. It's kind of the meeting of everybody at the very, very beginning. So, like, my character is not going to show up for a very long time because mm -hmm. I was late to the party. Got a glimpse. Got a glimpse. Uh, but it's kind of like sort of a retelling of the original get together and like so we just started with the with Vax and Vax and the twins meeting Keyleth and it's and I everyone actually do I actually am curious like how much are they adhering to the way things develop between y'all and how much yeah. is it sort of the revised origin well, and he's asking what, what I to wanted say? to ask but in a much better words here's here's what I'll say is that as of this issue, I wasn't at that game, so I have no idea because I missed the first couple games, which is why my character came in later. I have no, I have no idea how. Uh, like, I know that this is the place, and this is sort of adhering to kind of the events, but I have no idea how how it's how strict it's being. I, yeah. I assume it's a bit of a loose ad adaptation, but it does sound like us. Like, it sounds like Liam and Laura and Marisha mm -hmm. a lot. And I'll admit, the first NPC looks like Matt. He does. I was like, hmm. Just looks like Matt with a with a with a cheesy beard. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. What? Why? Why do you think that is? Because Matt, every beard looks cheesy on Matt. <laughs> I mean, like, he's go what, is he growing his facial? I saw him a couple days ago, and he had it could take months a hairy to find face. out. We have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has a hairy face. It's close, it's close to Halloween, which means he might be. Oh yeah, maybe he's doing Witcher or something. I, he did Witcher last year. Did he do it last year? Yeah, uh, oh. the year before. The stars are down says, Matt, it's pronounced <laughs> Mukina. 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 That's yeah. actually but not that's entirely the, that's untrue. That's the, uh, the, the cows, the cow, cow, the cow team. Yeah. Vox Mukina. Vox Mukina is a thing. Thank you guys for reading and checking out this comic book Yay! based Yay! off of this ridiculousness. Matthew Mercer, Matt Kova, Willoughby Sampson, and somebody, Northrop, I think? Uh, yes, Chris, Chris Northrop. Northrop. Uh, that's beautiful art. I'm... It, uh, uh, and how the is this wonderful happening? people at Dark Horse. How is this happening? Ah, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it, and it's making me into an idiot, just sitting here going, Gah! To it's answer many questions, book. it's going to come out monthly, digitally, and then in a collected edition this spring. Yes. Yeah. So it's only digital for now, but there will be there will be like a physical manifestation of it sometime in, in the early 2018. Great. So. Well, congratulations Thank on being you. in a comic, uh, and we're uh, let's get let's let's. Uh, Let's do our show. Yeah. Let's, so let's, let's talk fantasy. So we, yeah, we thought in, in honor of Critical Role, since it's such a it, it's such a D and D reality, that it'd be fun to like talk about. I mean, like, I, I get weirded out by the notion of Tolkien, of like a guy who basically wrote like what is essentially a Harry Potter book that then, mm -hmm. for like the next hundred years, we just decided that there would be an entire genre of fiction where people learned magic in four houses somewhere in a castle in Europe, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like. There was an evil wizard, and like like that was just sort of a genre. Mm -hmm. Was Harry Potter fan fiction was just sort of became its own like, and that's basically what Tolkien fantasy was. like. There's 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 mythology behind Tolkien. Like there's there's the mythology of Europe, and there's the Arthurian, Arthurian myths. But like he basically coalesced it into this very modern thing with hobbits and wizards and dragons. Mm -hmm. And then we all I bet we can tell that three hundred ways now. Or and more, maybe three thousand different and we ways. Keep doing it. Well, and I, I think like there's something to be said for. I know this isn't comic books, but it, 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 we're talking Tolkien. Yeah. But uh, there's something to be said for like the richness of mythology as well. Like, like that's really all we're like. It, it, it was Tolkien saying like, I really don't feel like England has a very strong mythology, so I'm going to create it, base it on Arthurian legend and some like Germanic creatures, and build my own mythology. But like he had a deep well, a deeper well to pull from than I think maybe he initially realized. Sure, 
but like why this month? Like there's so many different mythologies, but this is the one that we decided we're just gonna like really get into. Like you mean like to, to Lord of the Rings? Like not just Lord of the Rings, but like Star Wars is is a fan. Like I, and this is one of my favorite things to point out to people. Is so like, what's fantasy? Yeah. What is fantasy? Yeah. Um, fantasy, uh, specifically, I like that we both looked at Talison. What's fantasy? It's because we know he has a rant prepared. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, Lord, <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm shy. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm not. I'm no, you're just, not. Just, just blushing. Um, when we're talking about Western fantasy, very specifically this, this, this notion of Western fantasy, is this set structure of, of racial identifiers, be the dwarf, elf, the dwarf, elf, and man, and their various outliers, being pixie, hobbit, and otherwise. Um, stories that usually center around dragons, wizards, questing. It's a series of tropes. It's kind of a little package collection mm -hmm. of tropes that we have just sort of decided gets its own genre. Uh, the perspective based on these stories can shift, but oftentimes the plot points and movements are always the same. There's always we've, there's sort of an established understanding that it is um, medieval, that it is elven, dwarven, and human, and then whatever sub races built in. But there, that there's this notion of this mystical Europe that, that everything takes place, this planetary mystical Europe mm. that exists. Middle uh, Earth, if you will. Middle Earth, yeah, Middle Earth. Uh, and, and Lord of the Rings is a good example of someone taking a, trying a hyper-realistic version of this, where mm. like, there's only three dragons, which is why it's super realistic. <laughs> it's, it's, we've cut down the dragons to three and kind of a wizard. Yeah, um, like that's, well, that's one of the interesting things about Gandalf is that like, yes, he's a wizard, but like, what's the actual like? What is the actual magic power that he has? Like, he's like, by the flames of Uron, you will not pass. He's an enlightened like, fundamental, a fundamental force. He would, he would be very much like, like the, uh, the, uh, um, like a Moses character. Like, it's like a fundamental connected force of the universe. Sure, no, I get that. But it's, it's interesting when you hear him described as a wizard, and you start like, I remember when I read it as a kid, I was like, he's a wizard. I bet he throws like shoots fireballs and all, and like he never. No, no, he does doesn't. that. Like at all, like like he like he defeats the Balrog and all that stuff, but like, oh. it, it's through like kind of like force light, yeah. kind of it's like oh that's so bright. Well, you know? and, like because of this structure and like and like swords, magic, uh, questing, like you can you you take something like the, like the original Star Wars tri trilogy, which while it looks like science fiction, spaceships, spaceships. Mm -hmm. Space. It's, the science fiction is literally just a skin. It's like it mm -hmm. is like on top of a much older story, and like it's a young boy who an old wizard comes to and says, who trained his father, gives him his father's sword, sends him on a quest to defeat the evil emperor and his dark wizard. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it, I mean, it's and then space fantasy. It's and then there are like creatures that join him, and there's different races on different planets. But that like there's you know hobbits who are who are little you mm -hmm. know little Ewok characters, and there are. I mean, and like you got like Chewbacca, who's like the tank. You know, yeah, yeah. He's a he's a he's a he's basically a Goliath. Mm -hmm. I mean, and like it's all of these fantasy tropes that are like given. It's just like a normal magic sword, except it, it has knobs and it glows. But it's yep. a magic sword. It's a magic sword. And he has wizard powers that he's learning. Yeah. Force so pool, how do these tropes interact with, say, the Robert E. Howard universe? Like, okay, no, you would have to, I would, need, I would need some help with this because then it gets too big. I haven't read that much That's Robert E. Howard, but he's what? obviously like, I, I know when, when I'm going to say this wrong because I always say it wrong. Gary Gygax. Gygax? Gygax. 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 I think uh, we're going with it. We all look at D&D &D and we go, oh, you read a lot of Tolkien. But yeah. he has said, like, Tolkien was never his thing. Like, he got a lot of his fantasy tropes from other and secondary sources. He was cobbling them together out of the same, like, shared environment. But claims that Tolkien was not the direct influence. It was mostly Howard and, I, like, Conan? I would, I would be willing to believe that Tolkien is, was not the direct influence simply because of the fact that by that time, by the time that D&D that &D was being assembled, uh, Tolkien had already given birth to fantasy. Year span, like as much as I feel like Tolkien was written 700 years ago, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, yeah. it, it feels like it should have been. I, I think it's possible that he just absorbed it through osmosis. Although any attempt, and I think maybe a lot of it's legal, but any attempt to like not pretend that it is oh, not maybe he's like, a direct they're grandchild. Not elves. That might, they're I might elves. be falling for that. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. and it's no matter where you heard about it, wherever you heard it on the street, elves are elves. <laughs> They act like elves. They but, talk but like elves. There's not. There can't really be a copyright on elves because there isn't. 
elves like so how could there be a legal suit that he stole anything from I, I the think Tolkien less, I think like I mean like let legal more of like I'm I, this is an original thing and, and gotcha. like just sort of okay. trying to keep the whole notion you of You don't mean specifically like I took elves from Tolkien. Yeah. yeah. I think it's okay. like no it's just elves. Elves are elves, but if you go into the mythology like the elves of mythology are are, are uh, in the fairies of mythology are very different creatures than Many what Tolkien types. puts. Mm -hmm. Pukas and sluas and some of them are teeny tiny and made of little web creatures and like some of them are like fat and angry little mm -hmm. uh, like it's it's weird. A lot of those fantasy tropes I didn't encounter till I got deep into the Pratchett stuff. Yes. Where I was oh, like, oh, I've elves never, are not like I've I never read the Pratchett right. stuff. Hmm. Man, going postal. Oh, I love going postal. But like the elves and lords and ladies. Yeah. They're so we we haven't gotten to comics yet, but we're talking about sources. But this, this is this is this a good is place to go though. because because like uh, it would it would be like like. Thankfully, this didn't happen in superhero books. But if they're like Superman had been like almost sprung fully formed from from the the, the boy's forehead, uh -huh. uh, and not been just like an iteration of a, of a genre that had already been sort of naturally forming, and like this one book happens and everyone goes, "This is how superhero books happen from now on," and like Spider-Man's a big deal because he doesn't have a cape, and that's our big genre well, break. And he's a teenager. Well, I mean, we, are, we would have already had, like, that's, like, already a derivative. Like, it's, like, the building derivatives of, like, we can do fantasy now that's set in the modern world. We can do fantasies with four different kinds of elves. Or, like, or like, or like you know, what is it? Um, God, the Game of Thrones, where, like, there's no elves and no dwarves. There may have been a long time ago. Yeah. But they're gone now. Oh, and, like, that's not even, like... We're not even, you don't watch, you know, that show and go, where are the elves and where are the dwarves? You're like, yeah. oh, it's, we're, we're doing that iteration of this genre break. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's become so DNA and so fundamental that it's like, it's hard to even wrap your brain around. We, we, we take for granted what those tropes are because we just intrinsically understand them. It's, it's so like intrinsic to pop culture. We just, in, we just get what they're doing. Sure, like, it, it, it would be like 50 years from now, Harry Potter fanfic becoming so in, 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 encroached into the normal reality that having a, a magic school for gifted wizards with five houses instead of four doesn't seem weird because five houses is a very uh, common deviation from the norm. Yeah. So this is the five house wizard show. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that makes I sense. Get, I yeah. get that, I get that. Like, I didn't even know that was really a thing, but I guess we're doing that. And yeah, we're at that point with Tolkien where it's just, he's so in there that like sub-genres have their own life and we don't question them on any so level. So what, what are the other like influences there? He was drawing on a ton of stuff and he was making up a ton of stuff. But like I love, uh, I don't know very much about the sources for them, but I love Ibsen's, I'm going to say this wrong, yeah. Kergunt. Uh, I'll go P E E R G Y N T. It's, it's his play drawing on Norwegian yeah. mythology mm -hmm. and uh, trolls. Like Trolls. Troll Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Like there's tons of source material for like various weird monsters. Where do dragons come from? And the, and well, in the, well, there's, it, I think there's debate on dragons of where they come from because there's, there's the, there's the Chinese mythological uh, dragons which have their own sort of weird reality. What was the first, I mean, and like, and did, I know there we was. We did deliberately, when we talked about this episode, we were like, we're going to try to stick to Western fantasy because yes. Eastern fantasy well, is a whole thing. Whole other and what, what I thought was funny was our text chain going back and forth when Talisman oh was like, was like West, Western, West, fantasy, Western fantasy, like, and I was like, oh, you mean like pretty, uh, pretty deadly and east of west, like Westerns. That are fantasy. And that yep. are also fantasy. And he's like, like, no, 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 Western. And I was, I was like, like, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Western. And he's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, so we can do that, we like can do that episode, too. That's Western. great. I can oh, think of things. Oh, yeah, the completely different thing. But, the, I mean, the Arthurian myths are full of, are full of uh, dragons and knights and, and where a lot well, of that. And like Beowulf, and Beowulf. Is, is Grindel, but Grindel's never really actually defined except it's a beast. Like, they never really say it's a dragon or what. It's just kind of like this behemoth. I see, yeah, we see, right? we see it represented as a serpent an awful lot. Yeah, yeah. but like, I don't, because I've read it a couple times and I don't remember it defining it as a dragon and I don't remember the description of it being a dragon. No, and, and, and I just I, remember it being like this giant, awful beast that's hard to beat. And as most of my his, history buff friends, of which I have a surprising number, like to remind us, like, any time we're trying to figure out anything that happened any further back in time than three weeks ago, it's pretty murky. <laughs> yep. Three weeks is about the line where, like, it's subject to an awful lot of interpretation and no one really knows what, what, what the hell is going yeah. on. Because, and when, like, Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, that oh, also wow. came out around the same period of time as Beowulf. We have a shout out for Beowulf in chat as, yeah. our, as we're talking mythology what, what? and Beowulf. sources. Beowulf. 
But it's amazing that this is a genre that still moves moves forward today. That this yeah. this notion of like of like the my mystical Europe is 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 such a prevalent part of our storytelling. Yeah. It gives us so much of World of Warcraft. It gives us so much of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's made it, and I'm going to be talking about a Japanese manga uh, iteration version of. I accused Tallison of cheating, but Western he has an explanation. Fantasy. Is there Berserk? No, it's not Berserk. Although Berserk would have been a good one, but Berserk yeah. is pretty Japanese still. There's one that is definitively Dungeons and Dragons, which I'm kind of curious if anyone, if Chad yeah, is okay. going to name the book that Talison's going to, or the, it's a, it's, the book slash series that Talison is about to talk about. It's it's a cartoon, it's a manga, it's a novel series, and several video games, including I think a massive multiplayer at this point, uh, <laughs> or a, there's an online version. It's huge. It's been running forever. Okay, I'm just going to divert us to read this comment from Cole Drake, who's got a really <laughs> awesome thing. In the fight Cole between, Drake? in the fight between Grendel and Beowulf, confusing pronouns as to who is gripping whose arm suggest a doppelganger effect, a doubling. Though these two are two sides of the same coin, and the coin is warrior. In other words, Grendel represents everything a warrior should not be, or functions as the cumulative opposite of all Anglo-Saxon warrior virtues. I don't know if that's true, but that sounds cool as heck. God, that's yeah, a, that, that sounds awesome. That's a fa fabulous sentence that I'm going to be masturbating. And, ma and maybe that's why, like, I'm not remembering specifically the form that and the Beast Grindel takes. Yes, congratulations. That is the correct answer. Uh, who who said Argentum that? Argentum Flair. Argentum Flair has the correct answer. It is Lotus War. Uh, so Lotus War. Talk about Lotus. So like we're here, just talk team. about it. Oh, so a couple what's of record people. of Lotus War? Record of Lotus War. Now most people will probably know it from from the original. There's two animated series, but there's also uh, there were also again manga novels uh, and otherwise. A bunch of people got it. We and now everyone well. knows Sorry, Lotus guys. War. Uh, <laughs> whoever whoever Google's fastest. Um, oh my God. It was You're a fascinating deal. And there's 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 a little bit of uh, and I will use this of of sort of apocrypha around the show and like the story that got told and whether or not this is true I know every time you say that we should both sort of apocrypha. <laughs> The, the 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 story about about this book is that it was actually a D and D game, one of the early like D and D games in Japan that actually got like turned into a, a TV series where they they took their campaign and actually novel um, you know made a novelization yeah. of it and animated. Do we have any of the Lotus War art in there just so people can see this? Like it's a fascinating like '90s anime style rendering of D and D tropes. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. Mean Sabo says I still have record of Lotus War on fan sub VHS Whoa. from the first Dragon Con. Whoa, that's amazing. When was the first Dragon Con? No one was alive. No one knows. No one was alive back then. Then pseudopocrypha. Pseudopocrypha. Uh, I, that is one of the nerdier sentences that has ever been uttered, and I'm jealous that I didn't get to utter it. So yeah, this was the CPM release oh. from back in the day, which which Aww. which is adorable. Um, and then there was I'm curious if some of the other because there's like Deedlet the Elf who is just adorable and it was like everybody's everybody's D and D crush back everybody's in the nineties. Everybody's D and D crush. Did any of the other uh, pieces of art come through, or is that the only one? Those are the broken files. They were broken files, man. Uh, just uh, yeah. If anything pops up, though, if you, if anybody wants to take a look at at, at Lotus War. Oh wow! Boom. Thank you, Liz. Wow. Producer Liz says it's 1987 when Dragon Con started. Um, and if anyone is ever interested, you can actually probably f still find the first episode of Record of the Lotus War, which is literally a fighter, elf, dwarf, thief, paladin, uh, like magician, fighting a dragon. Just going into a cave and fighting a dragon, 90s anime style, including like and like with with like really done. You can actually see the roles happening of like the the fighter just runs up with his sword at the dragon and just starts chopping at the leg, and it's just sad. It's just ah, ah, ah and you're just like oh, dude, no. So no, that's man. that's one of the more interesting things about like uh, a lot of the stuff that's coming out more in like. Even after Tolkien, like, uh, seems like it's more prevalent now, and I think that's the influence of D and D mm -hmm. is class and race and warrior kinds of stuff. Where it's like, because Tolkien had a bit of that, where it's like, here's the warrior, ranger. the ranger, dwarf with axe, like a dwarven like warrior, the the, the the ranged warrior, you know. So he had a bit of that, but not quite as distilled as what Gygax ended D &D up bringing. Is, yeah, is, D and D is the one who was like. You need a tank, you need a magic user, you know, like, but I feel like that, since D&D, &D, a lot of literature has sort of started to adopt absorb that it. and absorb that, right? Am I, literature am I wrong? You're not. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, you're yeah. not wrong. You're, I mean, you're, it feels like an wrong. easy...
observation to make, it, but it's something to talk about. Well, from the green chair, it would. I mean, that's that's what the green chair does, but it makes everything seem simple. That's he, the exact opposite. He, I feel he like who sits within the green chair here. seems is capable of explaining things in, in basic terms. It's, it's <laughs> no, but like even like in like the Conan and, and Red Sonia books, there was a little bit of like uh, of like I'm going to gather a party and and have them have them join me in a, in a quest kind of mm -hmm. vibe, and everyone's going to have their thing. Well, but what's interesting, like I, I've only read the first couple issues of Red Sonia, and you went, and, cla you went classic, and I went classic. Like, right. I went so like, what did you look at for today? Yeah, yeah, let's bring some oh, stuff man. out. Man, because we threw a well, lot. And by the way, we hear you people shouting Elf Quest every couple of minutes in the chat. It's on the agenda. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so oh, happy man. that you're here. Hmm? Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to try and do was go and figure out what the first fantasy comic books were, like the very first, like, like. Like we've got like Tolkien and Howard and stuff like that setting up a fantasy genre and in and, and literature, but what was the comics? And I couldn't, I couldn't really nail it down. But I did look back at like like before even like Golden Age, like Proto Age, I guess, where like stuff like uh, Little Nemo and Slumberland, Slumberland is starting to I think get those like fantasy wheels turning. And I know that that's like I'm uh, currently reading through a book on the comics code. And it's fascinating. It is. Oh yeah. Oh my God. It's it's called Tencent Plague Go. It's oh, we, uh, we'll it know. is highly uh, didactic. It's a it's a little a little scholastic. It's a little hard to break through sometimes, but it's really so well done. But they're talking about how a lot of these Golden Age guys were informed by what came before them, obviously. Ne so ne Nemo is definitely a bit like more of a. It's a very fabulish book, but it's, it's got a, it's got the. Inf I mean, here we are. It's got the influences. Yeah. yeah. God, yeah. what a gorgeous, oh, it's a what beautiful, a gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful cartoon, but it's about this little kid named Nemo who goes to sleep, and I think like in the first panel of the first comic that uh, uh, Windsor McKay ever did, it talks about Lord Morpheus of dreams, mm -hmm. of like, of dreamland, or uh, slumberland here, and it's him going through his dreams, and the last panel of every comic is his mother waking him up. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and be like a historical uh, uh, jerk. Was this originally published in Punch Magazine? Was that the origin of Little Nemo, was Punch Magazine? No, it was, oh, a, it was a newspaper, I think. It was, it was the newspaper newspapers, yeah. Punch Magazine. Mm. Yeah. All right, I was trying uh, to remember. And then the first comic book was 1934's Famous Funnies on Parade, where it was just like one page at a time. Yeah. Collecting all of those, and it was given away for free as proof of concept for all these other. You should buy our newspaper because it's got this comic book in it. Yeah, I like when you do the voice. <laughs> There's also a do the, the, the formal animated sources series of, of mythology that I haven't really considered, like the 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 boom in like Lost World kind of adventure stories in the late 1800s, early 1900s, lent itself to a lot of like fighting dinosaurs and discovering weird civilizations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things. Um, and and questionable decisions of world depiction uh, but you know also a sense of adventure but but you also have things like uh, uh, friggin the Oz books by L Frank Baum mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which have to have been like there's a reason that's contemporary with like little Nemo and these sort of imagined landscapes mm -hmm. um, full of weird monsters and and beings. I, I, I tend to I tend to call that I, I put that in the fable category usually of like the very fantastical uh, so how Alice do you, cause Wonderland, we were talking you were Alice like Wonderland. fables doesn't quite count and part of it's because it's an urban and, fantasy but why why um, when you say fables, you're talking about the, the comic, comic book. Yeah. Fables, the uh, comic fast book. Fast forward 100 years to the Vertigo comic fables. Um, because I can, I personally, because it doesn't use the the, the Tolkien iconography. Okay. Which is elves, dwarves, uh, swords, wizards, dragons. Okay. Just basically, the iconography is is more varied. It's more fluid. It's not coming from that core place. It's coming from a far more varied and distant uh, series of of tropes. Even though a lot of those are European tropes, they're just not that weird. Like, so you're talking so about like we're trying to locate things in like a taxonomic tree, and we're picking branches that we think connect to Tolkien in sure. some way or other. I, I'm, I'm a, and I've, I've probably brought this. I'm a big fan of the gravity of the of the gravity theory. If it's if it's if, if it's the notion of if if uh, Tolkien is the main source of gravity, if that's the star that it's orbiting around, no matter how a, a piece of fiction is being pulled by other pieces of gravity, if it's Tolkien with a little bit of a sci-fi veneer like Star Wars, where you have sci-fi over here and Tolkien, it's really orbiting the Tolkien sun even though it's getting a lot of the energy. But how do we discuss common sources beforehand? Uh, I'll just shared gravity, I know. And then uh, what's in the star. I know, it's all very, it's a broken metaphor, but God damn it, it's case so, so what you're suggesting- I can't rule out that he travels no, through me, time me. influencing other literature. No, So well, what you're suggesting though, in terms of fables for this particular argument is that fables seems more based on 
not mythology. It's more fairy tales, poems, uh, and, and it's, like it's, Little Boy Blue and the Jabberwocky, and, and it's also, that it's, doesn't it's count also as a mythology It's a deconstruction also, and it's not... Sure, and it's, but just because it's a deconstruction doesn't mean that it can't be Tolkien-like. It's Well, it, it, can, it can be Tolkien-like, but like if, if uh, the great heroes of, of Japanese myth showed up in fables, would that be weird? No. No. If the great f fables of Japanese myth showed up in Tolkien, would that be weird? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I there's see, there's I see my your argument. Fables, I see your is, argument. fables is really coming from a completely different, they're, like they're, they're... It's coming from a bit more of a holistic, more inclusive, like, we can use mythology, but we can also use fairy tales. We can also use, like, uh, a it's bit a more... It's a bigger Crayola box. It's a bigger, yeah, it's a bigger it's box. A, okay. It, yeah, Tolkien is a crayon. That's fair. So you're talking about a more distilled mythology. Sure. And, and fables, part of the joy of fables is that it, it, it is a smorgasbord. Uh, Pseudopocrypha. Pseudopocrypha. <laughs> uh, smorgasbord is another great term. That I is a great one. Smorgasbord. Yeah. And by the way, we're not talking about fables today, but read that book. Boy, is, we will be talking about it oh, one day. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. It's one. It's one of the first indies that I ever read. Cause like I'm really? such a I'm such a superhero guy. Like that's what I was raised on. That's why I defined comic books for like the first ten years of me reading Fables comics. Is a, Fables is a great read. And then I discovered Earth Two in the Valley when I moved to California. I was like, Fables? What is this? I've got to read more of this and Hellboy. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to go. Fables is a deep dive because it has a bunch of spinoffs too. Yeah, it does. Oh, man, Misty Ugh. Crom has a question for us. Mm. Crom, ask. Bye, Crom. What is best in life? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher the quote, man. Do you know the? Do you uh, remember the quote? Like, uh, I just know that it says. I did. Before you hear the lamentations of their women. Yep. That's Crush your enemies. Yes. Crush your enemies. Yes. See Angel them driven before, before you. you. Hear the lamentations of the women. Yeah, that's the. Uh, <laughs> There's a, there's a musical. Version. There's a Conan musical. Cross your enemies. Wait, there's a what? See them. It's a fake like thing, but they made a musical song of like, hear the lamentations of the women. And there's a whole, it's you, <laughs> YouTube it. It's great. <laughs> it's also got like a bad accent when he does it. It's really great. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I'm I, so glad really you asked fun. this question, Misty Crom. Uh, oh, I was going to say. By uh, Misty Crom. Gail Simone writing Red Sonya is, is what oh, is best okay, in life. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, we were talking about this uh, right before the show. I went back and read like the first couple issues of the original Red Sonya. And by the end of page two, she's already been objectified. And it's already become a thing of like, oh, she's a strong woman. But like, there's still that undercurrent of like, like even though it's subtle, it's still there. Like that sort of like chauvinism, objectification of women. Even though she's a powerful woman, a uh, uh, female hero, it's still being written very much from a male perspective. Like the chainmail Here's bikini the and all that the stuff. Compromises we make. Sometimes <laughs> we're like, thanks for existing. We're gonna take you in kind of a warts and all way because this is the deal that we had, and at least you existed. But what, and, I, and I agree with that. Others tried to cosplay what, it and bless them. They they did a good job. But I did not read the Gail Simone run, so I'm interested to hear, like how like how did she does, like is that a thing in there at, in any capacity? The, like does that carry over in any way? Like how have, was she able to you, sort of escape that? I've read only bits and pieces of Gail Simone's, but I know her approach to to Red Sonia in general was just the, to let her like. To kind of let her speak for herself, let her have her own desires, let sure. her have her own appetites, um, and let that inform the storytelling. Yeah. Uh, which is really sort of a great way to approach it. Like, you know, stop and think about what she would want or do. Yeah. And, and the, she's an interesting piece of, of this mythology because... Uh, Gail like, Simone or Red Sonia? Both, yes. I guess. <laughs> yes. But, uh, there we are. That's... Uh, interestingly, also, the like, very first appearance of Red Sonia, she's not in a bikini, but the bikini shows up quickly and never leaves. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting because I believe fantasy comics in the Conan verse, in the Robert E. Howard verse, were absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. Like in the 70s and 80s, yeah. they were a massive part of the comic book publishing industry, specifically mostly on the Marvel side. Uh, and a lot of it was taken from the short stories by Robert E. Howard. Um, but as far as I know, Red Sonia is kind of a borrowed name original character that Roy Thomas, I think, added to the mythology. Mm -hmm. And he was the kind of mm -hmm. the guy sort of spearheading a lot of that. Uh, and so, so she occupies kind of a middle zone, I think, between like, is she a comic book creation or like, like Conan, an import from the Robert E. Howard pulpiverse. I, yeah, like it's, it's interesting because I was reading, I was reading about great. the, no, I'm I was reading the history of that and it, she was like hinted at in the Conan books. Uh, dealt with and stuff like that like she was a character, but 
never a big presence. And I think I think it was Roy Thomas who did the comic book, who created the comic book, who was like, no, we need a strong female character uh, to go along with Conan. Conan's, Conan is selling very well. And then Red Sonja actually became a better seller than Conan, mm. which I, th I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know what that... Why that is the case, but I, we did I, have a question from Tamlin who was asking if the black and white magazines of Conan Cole and Doc Savage count. Uh, uh, were those reprints essentially like there? There was a period. I'm not sure about Doc Savage and his black and white magazines, but mm. I know like Savage Short of Conan and Cole um, had like oh, tons man. of great storytelling done mm -hmm. in that unusual like flourished in the 70s format of making the magazine size and in black and white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I, I'll I'll say I mean just just beyond pure sexualization, which was definitely a, a selling point for that book. It was it had a slightly more occult veneer than Conan did. Yeah, it did, yeah, and I was a good call. I will admit I really dug that. Yeah, I, I like I like it a little bit more than Conan. I, I do too. I, I've, only, I've only read a few a few issues of Conan, but uh, I did prefer Red Sony, and I think it's probably because of what what you said. Yeah, that it, the it more had a, occult it had a little bit more of a magic sword and sorcery vibe than Conan. Conan was always a little bit more of 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 solve the problem via cleave. Yeah. Uh, which, to, to, to be fair, it. also, Red Sonja had issues with as well, uh, in punny ways as well. But the the costume beyond beyond anything, and there's actually an ElfQuest interconnection with that costume, which I find really interesting. So let's talk we'll ElfQuest, because I had never read it I've until I've still never read it. I'm excited week, to hear you talk about it. I just started it. Yeah. I, I, I will say the Gail Simone run, though, I actually, I, she addresses a lot of these issues surprisingly well, oh even yeah, though. Oh, yeah, speak up. Oh, yeah. Like, the costume, there's nothing that can be done with it, but the art figures out ways of making the costume interesting without like me making it leery. Makes the character's use of the costume not weird, uh, and manages to put her into a world where it's it's it 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 just weirdly brings everything down to earth on a level that actually functions. Makes her an interesting character. Gives her some great people to talk to. I really like the book. And I think they slowly actually managed to even get away from the bikini a little bit, which I'm quite pleased. Yeah, and like, the other thing to note about the bikini is that it's very fun to make fun of, but if you're actually in the Conan universe and most everyone is naked, it's a little bit it like, a little is bit more less justified. palatable, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was also a piece of cosplay. It was one of the first pieces of cosplay when back when back in the uh, oh, uh, 70, there was a there was a, some very early Red Sonja cosplay that was quite famous. Um, it's, <laughs> by it's, Wendy, uh, by, by Wendy Pini. Oh, really? Yeah. By that piece what? I did not know. I knew that, what? like, that um, uh, Frank sure. Thorne ran around, like, judging Red Sonja cosplay contests, and it's one of those, like, this is an adorable piece of fandom history, but that's also kind of strange. Um, I believe, I'll double check this, but I'm pretty sure Wendy Pini was one of the original, like, hardcore, hardcore Red Sonja cosplayers. That's amazing. The, the Elf Quest? Yes. Writer and illustrator? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah. That is really I'm, fun. I'm going to quickly double, double check that. Because we will attach to the pieces of culture you give us, and yeah. sometimes that'll be like, look, we didn't make it up. We're just taking yeah, away. Like, I, I, I'm remembering okay like, the, way, the way that they sure. defined Red Sonia as being like this badass warrior. She, she's on a horse, and she's leaving a castle, and there's two like orc-human sort of hybrids there, and they're like, oh, that's Red Sonia. She, no man can touch her. And it was just like... Why don't we have to define everybody like that, you know? So, That's an awesome picture. I know. Wendy Peeney. Yeah. Is, is that Wendy Peeney? Yeah, if we Google Wendy, Wendy Peeney, we'll, we'll, we'll Google a picture. Well maybe done, and, Wendy Peeney. Yeah. Wow. I know. Just kicking, <laughs> killing it. Uh, yeah, it, it, she's, the she's, 70s were an amazing, like, wacky, sexy cosplay time, by the way. If just look at old cosplay photos. Um, it was hilarious. People yeah. people think that cosplay is new. It's no, not. It's, it is not. It's great. It's, it's been around forever. And Ren Sung is great. She's grog with a higher intelligence. Like, she's fucking... <laughs> Mm -hmm. They're doing a series right now where she ended up in modern day New York, and I I only uh, read a piece of it, and I'm really excited to read more because it looks really fun. I oh love dropping and they're sort of, I think it's, it might be Amy Chu, I may have this wrong, um, that's writing this run right now, but they sort mm -hmm. of are taking the, like, you know, it's 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 easy to drop the, like, person from that universe in modern day and have them be confused, but they're kind of like, but she's used to dealing with unfamiliar and crazy situations, yeah. so it might be more interesting to watch her try to just figure out the new world. Yeah. Like, uh, try to navigate this place, and, and so I'm, I'm excited to catch up with that. I'm digging. Uh, well, why don't you, uh, speaking of Peeny, yeah. tell us about uh, ElfQuest. So, I uh, <laughs> have heard about it forever. Uh, it's one of the absolute legendary independent comics. Uh, it's been running for 30 years. It ran It ran forever. It was running forever. He's currently wrapping up uh, via think, Dark Horse. Uh, yeah, it's, it, or it's just, yeah, with Wendy and Richard Peeney still, like, and, like, the, the, uh, 
practically the look of fantasy art of, of like the late 70s right there. Like that's what we, like if you were, if you were trying to cast a, a, a show about what comic books kids were reading in like 79, this is what you would mm -hmm. see. It was just, this, it's like a little bit Dark Crystal, a little bit Tolkien. It's mm -hmm. got such a phenomenal energy that's all its own. That's a great description. I, yeah. I had never, so I'm just a few chapters in. It's it deep. starts with a bang. Uh, yeah. It's fantastic. Like they throw you into the action right at the beginning. Oh, look at that. Oh. You can currently read, uh, the first volume is available for borrow on Comixology Unlimited, and you can read basically everything up through 2013 on the website. Um, I have been reading really? the black and white version that's in the Dark Horse collection that's on Comixology Unlimited, which I think is very beautiful. But there's some like uh, colored versions online, and I'm now tempted to go back and side by side them all. Um, what was your first encounter with ElfQuest? Oof. What was my first encounter with ElfQuest was running into Wendy and Richard Peeney at uh, Comic Con uh, many, many years ago, and they they. Basically, I don't want like they, they they did the hard sell at Comic Con, and I bought the f the first book that was available and gave it a read. Got into it, uh, read it on and off throughout my teenage years, and then eventually, like they are interesting. They're an interesting couple just because they sort of they're one of those the, those groups of people who like ferret young uh, young creatives through the industry. Like they they pop up over and over again in people's stories of like getting uh, of getting through the industry, and they've they've like a couple times in my life actually like hopped in to, to help me randomly with things. I don't even know if they would remember that. Like, I've, I've actually like heard that. they like fairy godparents? Like, I, I, I've, I've actually I've, heard that from other people about them. Like, I have randomly ended like, up at their house on a Thanksgiving before. Well, I've like, never yeah. heard that. And that doesn't, like, you are the most interesting man alive. So that thing actually, going, how did I get here? This is amazing. That actually doesn't surprise me in any capacity that, that you were there. And, and they've been skirting making a film out of the, like, it's such a, I mean, like, uh, they've been skirting making a film out of, out of these books for you, and, like, there's been a couple fan attempts that are really fascinating, but, like, Wasn't it's... there, like, a web series or something like that? There was, like, a web I series kind of thing, and, and they've got a couple other yeah. books that are really spectacular, but, they, like, the Elf Quests, I mean, like, it was interesting because it was a book that I kept coming and going from, like, Bone. Bone is another one of those books where you just, you sort of come into back and forth whenever you, I had, like, the hankering for, for high, high fantasy, and it's, there we go. And it's just, I like, I'm, I'm trying to think about like how to describe it to people without giving too much away other than it, it feels like the sort of storytelling that, that Henson was really good at when they, were, yeah. when they were in the mood to talk to teenagers. <laughs> like it's, if, if anything, I've always been a little sad that we didn't see a Henson style puppeteering version of the ElfQuest stories. Speaking like of Henson, did you ever read I think it's called Tales of Sand. It was a uh, Tale of Sand or something like that. It yeah, was yeah. Ramon K. Perez uh, no. drew it. Oh my God! It's so <laughs> out there. They adapted an unproduced Henson's screenplay. That's like yeah. sort of dream sequencing. It was like it was one of his very first. It's Archaea. It was one of his Absolutely very beautiful. very first things that he ever did. This is like predates Muppets by almost a decade, from what I remember of the history of it, and it never went anywhere. But you can see all the like. Sure, he goes off and does the Muppet Show, but then oh, Dark that. Crystal, yeah, yeah, it is, it's, it's I great. It is a hint at like the like just just absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful it's a art. The cover. story itself is weird and out there, and what is going on? It's still fun and amazing, but like I remember getting to the end of that book and going like, I actually don't know what I just read, but that was great. It's definitely got some surrealism elements to it. Absolutely, like a guy's yeah. wandering through the desert and sort oh. of things are appearing and disappearing. Uh, but like, it's it's a really cool journey. But it's, mm -hmm. a, yeah, it's a really cool journey. And like, you can see like, cause we've mentioned Dark Crystal a couple times. You can see reading that where Dark Crystal came from in his head. Mm. Because like it's like there are elements where you're like, oh, okay, you have always been fascinated with weird long voyages and voids of unknown fantasy. Art. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, like it's a beautiful book. So, uh, and speaking of uh, Dark Crystal, I think Boom has. Well, there, there's this whole Netflix series coming. So well, there's sure the Netflix there's, we're, series. We're going to get Boom, a comic book. Boom has a comic book already out for it. I think. Like, I don't know if it's an adaptation or. Uh, Dark Crystal? Mm -hmm. Dark Crystal, yeah. Yeah, they've done is a Is it an adaptation of, of the film or is it ongoing mythology? Do you they know? They did a few standalones that were sort of origin things. And then uh, the new one, I think it's Tales from the Dark Crystal. I have, or no, Power of the Dark Crystal. I think is sort of Power a, of the a Dark sequel Crystal, yeah. that they're doing right now. Um, somebody help me out here because we've been stalking it, but I haven't read it yet. So chat, 
Uh, help me Somebody remind in me. Somebody is, is reading books right now. Yeah. Bless them. Stargazer 1977 says, Tale of Sand reminded me a lot of the first Dark Tower book. Oh, mm. interesting. Oh, and Dark Half Elf 284 says, I borrowed the black and white comic of Elf Quest from a library in the 90s. There was even a cassette tape audiobook version of the comic as well. I think the, the Phoenix were awesome. very experimental. They were like early adopters of the web, early adopters of like the direct market was where they made their bones in the beginning, right yeah. at the birth of when like that was a thing. Uh, the, it's been a really interesting journey, I think. Hmm? Uh, how so? ElfQuest started late seventies. I want to say yes. I want to say yes. I know I didn't get my I didn't get my data. For sure. Hey, Tale of Sand is on Comicsology Unlimited. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Good work, Chief. Mm -hmm. Um, Elf ElfQuest was for for quite a while though. It was just one of those ubiquitous books that was on everybody's everybody's yeah. shelf all the time. I've still never uh, read it. I'm, I'm a, I should, you should I'm know. a bad nerd. Argent and Flair says, question, so I'm four trades into Saga, thanks to you nerds. Oh, no. Does it fit into this fantasy conversation? We, were conversation. we actually had That's this conversation. I, up. Uh, I feel like it's like Star Wars in a certain regard. The more openly, where's its influence? 78 was ElfQuest. 78 way. was oh. ElfQuest. Uh, I good, think it kind of does the same kind of the Star Wars sort of way. I feel like it kind of does. I feel does. the exact same. It's, it's space fantasy. It's mm. not science fiction in any way. Like, it's... it's I mean, there are, like... It's there's there's crazy gun technologies. There's yeah. like weird kinds of spaceships. So those are sci-fi elements, but also there's wings and horns. There's and wings and horns. Well, and like, there's magic. also a tree that flies through space. Like yeah. it's like that's really not a ship. That's a magical uh, organic piece yeah, of and, matter flying through and, space. And, you know, like and and, it's and like and, organic you know. sci-fi in general almost. Yeah. Well, and uh, spaceships spaceships do not necessarily sci-fi make. A spaceship is not is 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 by its definition not a piece of science fiction. A particular type of engine would have been science right. fiction is yeah. normally the notion of like applying some sort of technological advancement to 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 the world and then telling a story either in that world or about how that changes the world is like the technical version of science of science fiction of like what if and there's no what if to Star Wars like mm -hmm. that's why Star Wars isn't science science fiction even though it's got it's it's got lightsabers and, and spaceships it's there's no like what if we had spaceships what would the world be like what if we had like faster than light travel what if we what had if like we force had fields, gene like, editing yeah. what if we had any of these things it's, uh, it, literally, Star Wars is a long time ago in a in a uh, in a place far a long time ago, very far away. There lived a prince in the mm -hmm. yeah, like it's it. They literally open it with with Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Mm. Um, whereas, and I think Saga has a little bit I more of that. I never made the connection between a long time ago and a galaxy far, far, far away, away and Once Upon a Time. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. it's a sci-fi version of Once Upon a Time. They, uh, there was there was a there was a dark wizard and a princess yeah. who dared defy him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, well, and there's like there's yeah. all those there's all those you know the the criticisms that there's the criticisms of like you know uh, not criticisms but the the, the revelations critiques. that oh. critiques maybe uh, that uh, you know Lucas was pretty much just like stealing from Joseph Campbell and the monomythic element like structure of. Villains steal like geniuses that. homage. You yeah. can't steal the hero's journey. I know, journey. you can't, you can't, but like, I, I, I feel like George Lucas has since come out and said, no, I actually didn't read Campbell until after Star Wars. But. You know, it doesn't mean he didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, I'll also say that the, the, the kind of the genius of Campbell is that you don't have to, you don't have to read no. him or even know him to like borrow his formula because it's just... It's, Speaking of super ancient myths, mix. we we watched Star Wars in high school when we were studying the hero's journey when uh -huh. we were reading Gilgamesh. Oh. So this stuff Whoa. goes way, way back. back. It goes yeah. way way back. There's a guy. He fights monsters. It's a, uh, it, it is it is it is a it is a concoction that that works well. And I and I was thinking about like mild sci-fi veneers to to fantasy stories. I've got kind of a I've, I've got a fun little uh, four issue DC comic that I would love to bring up, which is Sh uh, Shining Knight from the Seven Soldiers of Victory. Were you going to go there, too? Uh, you know what? I was talking to somebody about our topic for today, and they were like, Shining Knight, the demon? Like, mm. I, I, don't, I don't know this story. You need to... Uh, please tell us. I have read since Seven Soldiers, so tell me okay. how, what he does I with it. I love... I love... I mean, like, to be fair, I am a... I am, like, I am, like, a little Morrison, like, like, troglodyte. I'm just like, ha, Grant Morrison, he can do no wrong. Ah, ah. And I admit that is, that is a um, part of my insanity. How dare you enjoy things? I know. It's Stop the worst. It. Uh, seven Soldiers is a really interesting story of seven different superheroes, 
um, who don't know each other. Most of them never meet, but basically and are... And sort of reinterpreting Golden Age characters, but with his own spin, it's, right? It's, they're, they're all existing characters, but there's kind of his own version of them, and they're fighting sort of this weird, very Grant Morrison-y, like, like outer universe existential horror. And there's basically the seven soldiers are kind of a myth that is put forward, which is that if this existential horror appears, there will be seven soldiers to come to come defeat them. And they think that they've, they've defeated a superhero team that is basically the seven soldiers of victory. And they're like, ah, nothing can stop us now. And basically, the seven soldiers are seven four-issue miniseries that are kind of interconnected, but not really with these seven characters and sort of where they come from and who they are, who then through like a series of like, if you know the show Wonderfall's Rube Goldberg-esque bullshit, manage to save the world even though they don't even know they're doing it. It's literally just the universe going like, ping, 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 thong, like to the bad guy using seven awesome. random superheroes to just completely fuck their shit up. So they don't actually team up. No, they're not a team, they don't even meet. They just are randomly all standing in the right place to just make something stupid happen. It's amazing. Wow. You don't even have to read the seven miniseries in order. There is no order because they're all out doing their own thing. So it's sort of like uh, <laughs> Layla Miller in, um, who just knows stuff mm -hmm. during the Very House of M. Much. An where she's like, actor character. Yeah, where, where her knows. power is that she, like in the comics, she just says, I, I know things. Yeah. And like it's like if she if you if you poke if you poke Talison and make him mad, then he's gonna run outside and fall in a manhole cover, and that's gonna stop someone from getting killed. There, there's a there's a you DC know? villain called Maid, was it Major Catastrophe or something who's like who's like has that power where he can just like I all I remember is he was a Flash villain, and there was at one point he was at like a nuclear power power plant, and so I was going, who are you? How did you get in here? And what are you doing with that cheese? And you're like, oh no. <laughs> The just kind of block the Swiss cheese. Like, oh, they're going to die. Oh, no. I am going to call back since we requested this help, and Jeff M. was our hero. The Power of the Dark Crystal, the current comic book series, mm. is based on an unproduced screenplay for a sequel. Awesome. So it is uh, a sequel comic. That's awesome. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but they have done a couple of other sort of like, they call them creation myths. They're yeah. like some other standalone stories. And, did we... and they've been doing Henson, uh, some shout out for the Henson Storyteller series oh. that uh, Archaea Boom has been publishing, where they keep do, they've take, they're taking themes. One was dragons, one was witches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they just do uh, total standalone stories by different writers and artists uh, working within that fantasy genre, uh, a la the old Storyteller oh, TV show. Oh, I love and that. And did we, did we ever answer the saga question really? Like, is we, it, we did, which is we're like kinda, it, kinda, kinda. Like, it has yeah. that in common with Star Wars. It's space yeah. fantasy. And space space fantasy. fantasy. Okay, I just well, want to like, make sure that we got that answered. So, but the, the Shining Knight just to sort of is, and it's only four issues, so you can just get the four issues. Is Sir Justin of the Knights of the Round Table as sort of uh, um, as sort of. In very like sci-fi fantasy, there's like evil dark elves who have a magic cauldron that's really like time, time travel device mm -hmm. that the evil queen uses are like corrupting the elves and pixies and turning them into like dark existential universe eating threat forces. And the last night of the round table, Sir Justin and his talking flying Pegasus horse go to defeat the evil queen and everything goes horribly wrong and Sir Justin uh, and his horse end up in New York City. Uh, and like, like in, in, So it's basically Samurai Jack. And the art is, I mean like, Who the art this? is stunning. Who is the artist? It is so amazing. Uh, Simone Bianchi, yeah, wow, Simone Bianchi, that's some of the best looking Simone Bianchi I've ever seen. Oh, it is, and like just page He's after, and I know. good, but I love this line work style. Oh, it anyway, kills. sorry yeah, and I know guys. we have a couple pieces to put up on screen <laughs> actually in theory, but like, and like the elves have these Ooh. giant thrown like spaceships that they use, and uh, sad, sadly bad things happen to the flying horse once they go to New York, but it's, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some sad, but Justin, Sir Justin <laughs> is an amazing character. Um, She's she's uh, like and she's been in the the DCU for a while. She actually eventually ended up in DC's medieval superhero team, uh, Demon Knights. Demon Knights. So. Uh, New Fifty Two did a lot of things that we're not huge fans of, but in a couple of places they took really cool ideas and chances uh, with the DC Universe, and one of them was Paul Cornell's Demon Knights. Paul Cornell, who can also do no wrong. That, that my was mind. on my uh, list of things to read that I didn't get around to. So please. 
inform me. Do you want to do you want to roll Demon Knights or? I, I only know the beginning, but it teams up a lot of the sort of fantasy esque characters from the DC universe, like Etrigan the Demon, uh, like Madame Xanadu, like um, what's his face? He's immortal. Vandal Savage. Vandal Savage. Uh, Sorry. No, no, we're with you. Um, yeah, so, from from over here, it sounded like you said, "What's his name?" He's at Marvel, and I was like, so "They don't. That wouldn't no, work." No, it's I that Marvel guy. The Marvel guy who's in yeah. DC. What? Mm. Huh? Huh? Not Captain Marvel. The uh, different <laughs> the guy. other guy. She's in. Answer no, Justin shows up in there as well. So. Oh man, answer Justin. Yeah, everybody's uh, in it. It's such a good book. Uh, and it's basically, if you can imagine, it's 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 Tolkien Justice League. Oh, like, geez. Written by Paul Cornell. Yeah, who, Justice League fantasy. Like, who just, yeah, it's it, like, and immediately, first issue, there's dragons. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, like, look at look at that fun right there. Uh, it's a it's a fun little read. I highly recommend it. It's silly. It's it's like it got a good mix of superhero and fantasy and fantasy tropes, and, and it's... And you've all probably yeah. heard us mention Etrigan before when we're talking about some of our... Uh, he's a Kirby creation that we love very much, oh. uh, who in later iterations speaks in rhyme, which we mm. love, uh, but is a, a, a man, Jason Blood, cursed with... Is it Jason? Jason Blood. He's the pirate. Yeah, gone, gone, no foreign form of man. Yeah, I think okay. it's Jason Blood. Have I got the right... I don't know. I'm, I think you're right so far. Like okay. nothing has has rung my spider sense, and I'm sure the child. Gone, gone, the form of man arrives the demon Etrigan, but like the surrounding uh, stuff, oh. I forget. Um, question for you that somebody in chat asked. Yes. This is Doctor Strange fantasy. Th that's. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. I'm also supposed to, to before we go any further because my brain is made of Swiss cheese because of terrible things I did Ooh, with I, I, Bonnie. Bonnie. <laughs> what are you doing with that cheese? I, oh no, uh, cheese. Bonnie, who you'll see later on the channel, took me to a rum tasting last night, and nothing good came of it. Uh, it was talked like a pirate day. It was talked like yes, a pirate day, and we oh we did definitely talk like pirates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yar, where's the rum gone? Um, right, so we are taking questions for the are uh, the end of the show questions. So if you have a topic that you would like to topic, watch yeah. us talk for five minutes, start suggesting them in chat. We'll we'll select a couple and I pull just, them out. Guys, so, yeah, we have the most amazing suggestions running through chat. There's been a whole discussion about Prince Valiant that I've been missing. Oh, I love oh. Prince Valiant. There's a shout out oh. for Birthright, which is an absolutely amazing oh. modern fantasy I've, comic. I've got that down. I've got uh, that down. Okay. There. I totally uh, forgot about Prince Valiant. Love Birthright. Do, 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 so do. There was something really good right after Prince Valiant that you all were getting into. Oh, somebody pointed out that like essentially Thor in the Tales of Asgard. Tales of um, Asgard. Well, I mean, like is then like delving into Asgardian. That's, that's mythology yeah. as it interacts with fantasy. Yeah. But you've got your trolls. Yep, you got, you got, uh, you got your troll, your uh, trolls. You got dark elves. You got light elves. You got frost giants, fire giants, and that's just five of the realms. I, I, you know, not I, to mention I don't think of Doctor Strange as, as fantasy. I don't think of him as fantasy either, but he is so like pop psychedelica. I mean, like, he, well, certainly the way Dicko did him, but like, just like at his core in terms of like influence and stuff like that. Like, that's more of there. an aesthetic. Like, pop psychedelia is more of a, a yeah, chosen more aesthetic, aesthetic. But uh, in terms of like character core stuff like that, there's fantasy elements to it. But I always. It feels more occult than I would agree. Fantasy or mythological, like, it, like right down to like the 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 like he fights demons. You're like sure. he doesn't really fight like mythological creatures. He fights he fights more religious, biblical, extra dimensional sorts and, of and things. And they gave him an axe for a while, and while it was cool, it was definitely like, huh, that's weird. Yeah. Whereas if you yeah, give well, an axe Hawkeye to like, has a bow and arrow, but that doesn't mean he's medieval. Like just having an axe to wield doesn't make you medieval. But like, but you like, know? but like putting putting the axe in Doctor Strange's hands made me go, that's an odd look. Which, yeah. which I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, but it was like, hmm. Whereas if you put an axe in like in like Thor's hands, I'd be like, okay. Well, actually, they've done that now that the, I think yeah, about it. Born. Yeah, Yorn Bjorn. Yorn Yorn Bjorn. The Bjorn. Yorn Bjorn. IKEA axe. Uh, does that answer her question? Their question. There's that axe. <laughs> Oh. I do love that run. Though I I, I, I will say that I take a tiny, bridge tiny with Jason Yorker. Aaron taking Doctor Strange's magic away, and he's still I don't know if he has it. And I'm a little I'm getting a little weary of him not having his magic. A weary? Is this a task you? It what? Does it tasks you? It tasks me. Okay. I'm getting a little weary <laughs> of it. <laughs> what is that? I love it. What's <laughs> that? The Mackey intensifies. No, no. The Mackey intensifies, yes. <laughs> Mackey oh, intensifies. Oh, I see Birthright yep. in the background there. Oh, yeah, there we are. Where, oh, it was on oh, the screen. You missed screen. it. Yeah. No, it's not see. behind you. Infinite it's... Birthright. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, what other books yes, do you have? Yes, this book is there wonderful, by the way. Uh, so, I've only read the first two volumes of this, and I know that I think there's like four, maybe five that are out. Uh, but uh, the, the basic 
premise of it is by uh, Joshua Williamson with I art wanna, by Andre Bresnan. Yes. I, I do want to pause because the first issue of Birthright is one of my favorite first issues in the last couple years. Ooh, so if anything yeah, right? about this looked interesting to you, stop listening now because even telling you the basic premise is going to ruin some of the twists in that first issue. But if you aren't convinced yet, listen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's uh, I'm just going to kind of give you super basics that I wrote down here. Uh, Aaron Rhodes and his son Mikey playing catch. Little brother Brennan is with mom. They're kind of on a camping trip uh, for a surprise birthday party. Mikey goes, he just disappears. Family can't find him. Uh, I think the dad is under suspicion for maybe killing him or the mom thinks that he did something. The dad thinks the mom did something and they go a year. Marriage is falling apart. They're, I think they're divorced. They're certainly separated. Mm. Um, and like, by the, this is all like the first five pages you get this, like I'm, there's no, I'm not ruining anything. Uh, but a full year later, a grown man shows up and claims that he's Mikey. And he's been in a magical fairy world where time moves in a different way. Yeah, he looks like Jason Momoa now. And it's he crazy. looks, he's like Conan the Barbarian, but their youngest son. So like the it. youngest son. So his big brother, who is now his little brother. I'm in. I'm in. And there are so many incredible twists to the story of don't even want to try to get into it. But it eventually starts doing flashbacks back to what's the world called? I wrote it down, I think. I do um, not remember. I can't the remember. The place he has been living. Uh, yeah. Uh, Toronto's or no, Toronto's is the evil. That's in Canada. <laughs> oh, but that reminds me. Telos. Oh, tell us. Yeah, I bought that and I haven't had a chance to read it. Uh, uh, I didn't even know that book existed until I was doing research for this. And then tell I saw Tell Us and I was like, oh, how have I missed this tell book? Tell Us was my jam. Oh, my God. Like, I, 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 the little baby Amy, the Mike Waringo fantasy art with cat people and a pirate lady. Like, how in was I? All the way. All the way. Yeah. Uh, so, awesome. uh, Birthright, <laughs> Birthright eventually starts flashing back to the fairy world where Mikey was and where he, like, had to learn to be this barbarian just to survive. It's, it's kind of like Jumanji in that way, I guess, but, you know. Oh, but there's so much more. It is so much deeper and so much bigger than that, and it is, oh, it is so good. It was so much better than I thought it was going to be. Like, I picked up the first issue and was like, this will be, like, this looks interesting. I'll read this. Uh, didn't know anything about it. I just picked it up based on the cover. I was like, this looks fun. And then at the end of the first issue, I was like, this cannot come out fast enough. This should be a daily book. It's a, it's a really phenomenal thing, especially yeah. I loved reading it blind because I was sort of like, yeah. is uh, it a same. crime drama? What is it? And then I'm same. like, oh, it's that. Oh, it's that. Oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I really, I, I've got, I've got the other, I've got all of the trades at home. I've got four of the trades at home and I haven't, I haven't been able well, to finish Well, Birthright is free two. on Comixology Unlimited or on sale on Amazon Kindle. So that, that's Good work, going, to be a, going to be an easy read for me tonight. I'm very yep. excited. Also, we've made it this far in the episode without mentioning Rat Queens. We have. That's oh, actually, oh, that's fair. Us. How dare us? We are, we are, well, and like, uh, speaking of Critical Role cameos, just, just, yeah. saying, just saying. One of my favorite Critical Role cameos is uh, Matt Mercer's in one of, the, yeah. one, of the, one of the panels, and you can tell it's him because there's an umbrella in his drink. <coughs> For those of you who don't know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the kids in the hall, the kids in the hall, uh, um, uh, was a girly cocktail sketch is yeah. all about Matt Mercer of like hiding in the hiding in the That's office and, and like trying this really like pour Kahlua into a glass and like putting a little umbrella and some cherry and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he's yeah he does like a girly cocktail. Yeah, he do, he does like he does like a uh, fruity fruity cocktail. Fruity, he likes his fruitier well, cocktails. Yep. There it is. Oh See? my goodness! Long hair and an umbrella. There it is. Great, you're a bard. That's. That's so good, and looks exactly like him. I know, it's a really, like... Is that like, Tess? Yeah, of course, it's Tess. Yeah, yes, okay. it's Tess. <laughs> Tess, Tess who, has learned, work, who has learned to draw our faces so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Every now and then she shows me a sketch, and I'm like, I love you so much. That's amazing, uh, yeah. I mean, like, Rat Queens without is, is, is on a certain level just the perfect distillation of the notion of what Dungeons & Dragons should look like as a comic book. Absolutely. I mean, so If hard. anyone is unfamiliar with it, the first volume of Rat Queens is called Sass and Sorcery. One of the all-time great titles for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it is about the worst D&D party ever, uh, who happened to all the ladies, and it's great. Yeah. Um, they are filthy and foul-mouthed, and it's so much fun. Yeah. 
I've, I've only read the first volume of it. I keep meaning to go back because I know there's a, quite a few of them now. Because it's been out for it a few years. It goes forever. It is one uh, of those books that goes forever. I know that it's one of Marisha's favorites. Yes. That's how I got the first volume. She bought like, it for me for Christmas. She and Laura cosplayed that one year. I know. Oh, man. Their cosplay was great. It was good cosplay, man. Uh, but like they very much like it's very it's like a D and D campaign drawn very well. Like it, that's what it really reads like is like going to the dungeons and like they have got you've got all your NPCs a guild and, and people are taking guild. contracts. Yeah, it's so like if you just want to read a really awesome D and D, yeah, keep re keep are talking. Okay? I just remembered a book that I like can't believe I, I like I'm gonna uh, figure if, it out while, while yeah. yeah. If you if you want to read just like a really kick ass D and D campaign, uh, this is the book. Yeah, Wait. and I can't think of any other comics about great D and D campaigns. So, no, no, no. <laughs> Speaking of which, actually, uh, somebody did ask no. what we think of the like. There have been various Dungeons and Dragons comics over the years. Yeah, I've only read bits and pieces of them. I think since IDW one, I... got the license back, they've been doing really good work on those. But have I've they? only I know, kind of dipped my toes in. I think Marvel started with it. No, DC. They DC did. had it. Yeah. Then it went. It kind of bounced around it went a little bit. For yeah. A while, yeah. Uh, and, and recently, IDW's been doing it. Uh, Jim Zub has been working on those, uh, and he is fabulous. Uh, he does an independent comic, uh, or did, called Ah uh, Original D and D Comics. Uh, the TSR logo under DC there. <laughs> uh, but uh, Jim Zub does an image comic called Skull Kickers. That was his own sort of D and D parody, which was part of what he was like essentially self-publishing through Image for years that kind of, as he honed his skills and made connections and got real, real good, uh, like he was the sort of the guy to go to when D&D like went to, to restart, mm, which is exciting. That's awesome. Uh, so, and that's that comic that they just showed are things from 88. Yeah. I think that's where it started. Uh, and when we were talking about, you guys were talking about the, the DC stuff earlier and mm -hmm. that reminded me, uh, late 90s I wanna say, the onslaught thing happens in Marvel, right? Like uh, Magneto and Professor X have mm -hmm. that weird psychic mental baby they sure that do. becomes onslaught and destroys the entire Marvel universe mm -hmm. in one of their first giant resets that Marvel did. Uh, and then when they come back, and Bert, Kurt Busiek, I believe, is writing the Avengers, uh, uh, Morgana Le Fay has kidnapped all of them and brought them back to the past. And for like six to eight issues, they're all are like medieval reinterpretations of themselves. Wait, holy crap, I need to. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> kind of fun. Down. And none of them know that they're, none of them know of this previous time where they were Avengers in Manhattan. They only know, I am, I am like Stephen of the Rogers, and I am, I am a and knight it was, here. It was one of the, it was, it, that was, that was where we got the, the, the Ren Faire bodice Scarlet Witch too, from yep. that run. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's actually not bad for, for uh, having, having been late 90s around the time of Onslaught. Not bad. Very Not bad. nice. I can't, I can't remember exactly who um, first realizes that Wait, we're not supposed it's, to be it's here? It's usually Hawkeye who realizes. Like, I think like, it actually Traditionally, it's Hawkeye been. who's like, everything is wrong. I think he just says that even when everything's fine. <laughs> everything's like, this isn't right. What, you just forgot to pay your cable bill. Something's gone Something's wrong. Something's gone wrong. The world is not right. This is not how it's just like. It's yeah. Just, your microwave's broken, Barton. That's all it is, okay? All it is. <laughs> oh, but something's wrong. Ah, oh, I found it. Steve Lichman. Oh, I forgot oh, I for I put about that in my notes. Steve Lichman. Oh, so good. For the oh, oh, I was, oh. I was Stephen Lich. I was on I'm a plane. I don't remember where I was like coming from, but like it was a long plane ride, and Matt and Marisha were like were like uh -huh. camped out behind me. It was probably New Zealand. No, I've, no? I've, I've, I've never been, but they like like Australia. They, was they Australia? were both are you wearing a little hood. Places that are far away. It was in the okay, it was in the China. United States. Uh, but, Boston. And, the, and New York. Just, was it New York? He just like with a blanket <laughs> on like <laughs> brought me this book. He's like read this. Who, who like, Mercer did that? Yeah, like, yeah like, Mercer did the same thing like, to me on a plane. I'm like thanks, man, and I was like and I read the whole thing on the airplane. Yeah, Mercer did. It, it's this beautiful, like, hardcover. I think the the guy yeah. who writes it sent a couple to Mercer because he's a big Critical uh, yeah, Role I got, fan. I got one of them. Uh, and uh, I was over at their house like a couple years ago, and Mercer's like, "Here, you've got to borrow borrow this. You're gonna Do love you it." You know about Steve Lichman? Someone, I, I remember someone telling me recommending it, but I have not sat down with so it. So it's it's oh. a web comic. It started off as a web comic. It's been we, out. we need to do a lot of web oh, comic yeah. love. I'm, I'm watching you chat, and I see your love for Order of the Stick, which is valid and amazing and wonderful. Uh, I need to hear about that. So oh. Steve Lichman started as a Lichman started as a uh, Lichman. Uh, Lichman started as a a, a, a web comic, but then got. Uh, collected into a beautifully a beautiful hardcover compendium, uh, and uh, it so 
It starts off with a, here's the first comic. Uh, uh, starts off with a barbarian invading like a uh, lich's lair and he's gonna kill the lich, uh, but he can't because he's not a virgin. If yeah. I remember correctly, uh, actually, it, it's 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 literally uh, it's Lichman says, "Hold on, shut up. Thou hast lain with the fairer sex." Well, and the, yeah, you said you were pure of heart. Well, I am pure of heart. No, no, no. You had sex, man. <laughs> it's like it's like so. It starts off like this high fantasy, beautiful artwork. Uh, yeah, like there, that's the main character, <laughs> Steve Lichman. Oh. It's, it's a dungeon crawl, but it's... It's what they're it's, doing when nothing's happening in the dungeon. It's told from the perspective <laughs> of the creatures that live in the dungeon when nothing is happening. Oh. And you don't get, like, you slowly, it slowly starts to dawn on you that that's actually what's going on. Uh, there's a beholder. There's, there's a beholder. constantly stoned, and all of his eyes are, like... Hey, there, there's, like, a, there's a there's a really creepy vampire who's constantly yeah. trying to date like like girls who are he's way too a, young. He's like always trying to be like, like uh, cool. Matthew McConaughey's character in Days and Confused. And like just he's out of high school, but he's trying to be young and cool still. And like it's just awful. Uh, um, it is. There's so... a ghost cop. Oh my god! I forgot about the ghost cop. Amy, you've got to read this. Okay, okay, I'm okay. So excited. Have you all read Order of the Stick? Because I just I've never even heard of it. Have. No. Really? No! Oh my god, Rich Perlu's I've never even heard of it. stick figure epic of, of D&D shenanigans? <laughs> like, this is me making sounds with my eyelids of blink, blink, blink. Oh my blink, god, blink. Uh, Order of the Stick is a long running and wonderful <laughs> webcomic that like, it starts out as just sort of like, a stick figure comic making it's jokes about they're, D&D. They're little weapons. Yeah. I see their booth at Comic-Con every year and I it's almost amazing. make it. I almost make it it's and then I get diverted. Yeah, Roy Greenhelt is their like lead. <sighs> I think he's a paladin. Uh, uh, they've got a wonderful bard uh, named Elan. Uh, oh, and eventually his evil double nail. Thank you, Order of the Stick. There like, we are. Oh, they're so cute. They're so oh cute. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, it looks like Flash animation. I love it. Well, look, it's it's like, okay. Oh, you're gonna burn out of, okay, yeah. It, it has grown tremendously in sophistication, uh, but like remains a stick figure comic, and it's amazing how they pull that off. Uh, but it, it, I don't, I can't, I can't describe it. It's just, it starts out as just D&D jokes and becomes an epic, amazing, brilliant thing that's also D&D jokes. Uh, <sighs> it, it, it had some of the most successful, it set one of the records for Kickstarters because there was, it was that, that like, that uh, transitional point of, like people making their work out there for free on the web before it was properly monetized, and when you finally figured out a way to open those floodgates, we all went, literally, here is my money. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, uh, so well done, Rich Burlew. You gave us all so much free entertainment. We owe you forever. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful, uh, wonderful stuff. Uh, I've never even heard of it. I'm so excited to like, play I know. with it. I've seen the booth, because it's in that little, with the little island. It's like right in that little part of Comic-Con that has like the little island where they sell interesting socks and, and, uh, and, and small other press. And small press. Small press is next to like small interesting press. socks. Yeah, the, yeah. The, red carpet, like, the red carpet. They don't sell comics in that little island. It's all the comics around them are the small press books, but it's like one of like three little small press areas, I but they're I the ones. You're talking. I guess because yeah. like the web comics people tend to group up. I don't know which booth, like, I don't think he's with Topatico, but I, no, but I the, wouldn't surprise me. He's always there, and I'm like, I. Anytime I like move towards that booth, I get diverted by something, and it's well, been that way for years. Traps that's been you set know, fifty yeah. percent of the people attending Comic Con too, so that doesn't help. <laughs> I know it doesn't help. Yeah, here's two hundred thousand people. You know half of them. And I and I walk like he's usually close enough to the rest of independent rabbits that like eventually Randy Milholland goes. Oh, for God's sakes! I'm like, oh, what? Yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, that That's nerd says, I have an eight pack from laughing reading Order of the Stick. And that gamer girl says, ah, Order of the Stick. Man, I remember wasting so much time in college on that. I'm so it's not just, a waste of time. It's extremely like. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna delve. I have so much, I have so much to delve to tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so, Especially I, now that I, I'm I wanna, done with the Critical Role comic. I need to read more. <laughs> the, uh, one of the, my favorite things about Steve Lichman is that it starts off and you're like, all right, I don't know how much further this joke can go. Like, and then, like, it they start to, like, going. he introduces a couple new characters. And, like, okay, those are good. I, I like those characters, too. Then, like, they start to see the outside world a little bit. Then it returns to the dungeon. Like, he is very inventive. God, I wish I could remember the creator's name. They're so inventive in how they keep the story going. And then it becomes, like, this sort of, like, interweaved, more complicated story. There's a lot more, like, character nuance and arcs to break through. Like, it's... It starts deviating from just being kind of a joke into a, 
I like that. Like, but the, like, the, what is actually the, the, happening? The, the, like, what, what are the, the the evil treasure chests that that, that eat I can't you? Remember. That, uh, what are they called? The, the, the mimic mimic box. Mimic, it's like right. There's there's like a sassy mimic box at one yeah. point. That's like yeah, very. Oh, that's. And so you're good. right. There is a ghost cop. He's an there's actual cop who's just a ghost, and he's in this dungeon. But like a modern police officer. A ghost who operates as a cop, or the ghost of a cop. The, the ghost, ghost of, of a cop. cop. I think he's also a real cop too. I think like, he was a real cop before yeah. he was murdered. I definitely know that like the How vampire gets. How did the cop end up in a dungeon? We don't know. I. Backstory. Get on it. We don't. We don't entirely know. I need maybe, to know. Maybe they've addressed it, and we just haven't read that yet. But they might have. I, yeah, there was like a mystery. Like, there's all this. There's it's mean so kids. good. That's right. There's mean kids can in I, the dungeon. Can I keep shouting? Because oh yeah, no, we're like all for over. the record, chat. You keep saying names that we talked about and then have forgotten to bring up, such as Castle Waiting. Castle oh. Waiting. Oh. So, my favorite thing about Castle Waiting. Is how sweet it is. It's so sweet. Very sweet for ah. a story about uh, abuse and escape. Well, that's yeah. it ends up just like tender and wonderful and and uh, charming and and generous and like. Yeah, and like there's such a slow like it's we're a slow so, burn. It's a slow burn, and we're so used to reading stories. Of, uh, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. What is Castle Waiting? It's a series by Linda Medley, <laughs> uh, written and illustrated about a woman who sort of runs away from a bad situation and finds a, a castle full of outcasts where she makes her home. Mm -hmm. uh, is it but a good what is the castle of outcasts? It's Sleeping Beauty's castle. And it's and it's sleep. It's surrounded. It's surrounded by the 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 thorns. By the briar, yeah. The briar, uh, and uh, sleeping like the curse happens. Uh, sleeping Beauty wakes up to the prince, and just runs away with him within minutes of waking up and the re and the mom and the king and the king and queen oh we almost we had an image for a second oh we did he, oh, he yeah. already okay. showed I you just missed it, yeah. it. all right uh, the king and queen uh, are missing so the castle is without royalty so it becomes like this safe haven for all these other characters who are seeking shelter oh look at that art oh and it's such simple art like but it's like very just like it's, it's got that like engraving old medieval woodcut yeah. kind of look. Yeah. Uh, not medieval, but like European woodcut. Uh, and I, I was obsessed with the way that that they drew geese in this book for some <laughs> reason. I was like yeah. really into the, the to, to all of the well, flightless uh, flightless birds. It it uh, won an Eisner in 1996. Mm -hmm. It started in uh, I think oh, 90, 96. Wow. Um, and it's. Still, I think it's still going. Fantagraphics has it now. There's a. I'm, I need to look into the current status of that because they ended up publishing it like partially complete, and then there was some thing yeah. about like whether they were going to finish it later, and I'm not sure what the deal was there. Yeah, um, it may have gotten weird. Yeah, it may have gotten a little they weird, but it's still out there. Or something. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, 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 it, it, like Jeff Smith, who does Bone, he published it for a while, but it, the sales weren't uh, great, or something like that. Uh, but it's. For There's, the record, we haven't talked about Bone, and at least one person in chat is apparently dying. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, we're going to get to it. Let them okay. wait. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I loved about it was that it's like, we're so used to reading adventures and quests and stabby stabby and magic magic. And this is very much, like, there's an entire comic where it's the main character on the road and, like, the last, like, it's 12 pages of her on the road. And then, like, eight pages of her, like, oh, these guys almost stole from me, and now i got to go get my horse back. Nah. Well, there's more like, than one way to tell a narrative. Like, yeah. there's more than, you, you don't, there are different elements that can make it engaging. There's yeah. environment, there's mood, there's yeah. setting, there's, there's. And that's one of the things that I think this book does really well, is it says, you don't need to have a giant quest. You can just have a bunch of char characters who would legitimately love and are sweet with each other and are just hanging out in a castle together, just trying to make no, ends and meet. It's, just like, and it's, it's, it's fun and in, in a similar way to, to Lich. It's like, it's like the other end of, of, of Stephen Lichman, actually. Yeah. They, they have a lot in common. Yeah. Where, where it, it's, it's the positive end, of, whereas, whereas Lichman is everybody kind of wrestling with angst. Yeah. It's like the, the Lichman cave is all filled with really angsty, angsty people who are not happy with what they've got and are really like, like Groping for for a, a better better versions of themselves, whereas yeah. Castle Waiting is, are people who are who are more just sort of taking stock of their situation and just sort of trying to be the best version of themselves in that. Which yeah. it's so beautiful, and the characters are so. And and there's a beautiful hardcover edition that I think you can still find. Yeah, and it, it has like fairy tale characters like Simple Simon. Like it's not even a fairy tale. It's just a poem about Simple Simon, this kid who like wanted pie or something like that. It's just like you can't we have pie. pie. You we all want pie. Uh, but then there's a, uh, what I didn't know, there's a character named Iron Henry, right? I think Iron Henry is... It's been a while. Iron Henry. That is a uh, Frog Prince character. I had no idea. 
like I was I was doing a little research behind this and I was like Iron Henry like I thought they were talking about like the guy who makes the railroads <laughs> yeah uh, John Henry John, John Henry I was wrong Still it's Iron right. Henry Iron Henry was a servant to the prince who got turned into a frog and his heart broke but uh, a, like a sorcerer or a wizard put three uh, iron links around his heart to keep it from breaking and that's why he's called Iron Henry but the uh, the bad side of that is that he didn't have any emotion and that's the character that you see in the book but they have a completely different story of him in the book totally different like mythological tin man kind of deal yeah um, but uh, I was like there's that that element was in the frog prince what awesome it's really good. Like, if you just want, like, a simple Stories, story. Y'all. They're great. I know. Now I'm, like, flashing back to the Henson attempted frog prints that they did for the little storyteller fairy tale, oh, fairy tale theater. Henson. That was so good. Okay. What's yeah. Bone? Nerd Sin, I've only read one issue of Bone. Like, I'm sorry. I just, hey, exciting I, opportunity. You get to read Bone. I know. I have it. I bought it on Comixology. Like, I bought two volumes. I was like, I can't wait to read Bone. And I, then I, I... I thought we would be holding off on Bone until we did, like, our kids, our kid, like, comics for kids episode. Okay. Put a pin in Bone. But Matt's going to read it. I'm going to brush up because it's been a while. That's a, it's a deep delve. I but feel, it like, is I feel a, like... It's an all ages fantasy epic written and drawn by Jeff Smith that has won every award there is because it is just one of those, like... It is like a, a Wizard of Oz level epic. achievement in storytelling. It, it is an it, epic. It, it, and yeah, so we will. Wow. Yeah. No. I mean, like, I feel like it. Like, I feel like that's its own episode, almost like with, with like own that episode. and Sarah. Episode. Like, yeah. Uh, it, it was started. I, I did write a couple things down though. It started in '91. Uh, went through uh, 55 issues were published between '91 and '91 and 2004, and it won the best humor publication in '93. Eisner. Uh huh. And that was the first Eisner that it won of, I believe, eight. That sounds Eisner's. right. It's it's it is a book that has run forever. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, like it's it's been going forever. It's it's style is simplistic. It's easy to pick up. It's a good my first comic, but like I it, feel like it had an ending. They've recently gone back and added right. like an epilogue, um, oh, which really? was exciting. But uh. Oh man. But it has like a beginning, middle, end. We may have mm-hmm. to do like a whole brush up for uh, that. Chief. Oh wow, Chief. Oh wow, that really? Wow. Really? <laughs> really? I'm now, Conan gonna... looks mad at you. Look at him on the board. Ken win, everybody. Ken, Ken win, win did Conan. Win. Yep. Conan's going oh, to slay good. you for that pun. I, I'm gonna <laughs> shout out more uh, uh, just because it came through in chat and I'll be so mad if I forget to mention it. My favorite book of the year 2015. Nimona. Noel Stevenson. Have we not talked about Nimona? No. What am I doing with my life? I don't know. We've been doing a comic book show for like six months. I know. This is why we do a comic book show with you. Educate us. Oh. Noel Stevenson is Mm -hmm. like a freakish genius. Yeah. Uh, And by that I mean, I'm gonna start making comics. Oh, they're immediately perfect. Uh, (laughs) I don't think Noel would agree with you, but like. She she was putting up like a page a day webcomic thing, and before it was like I don't know at what point in the process, but like before I think the halfway point, there was a book deal waiting for her. So, someone just edited out the montage, and they're like, let's cut through the montage and get right to the end of the. I don't of the, understand. Yeah. I think she stood in a crossroads, is what happened, and she <laughs> met someone who was like, would you like to make the most amazing comics? Uh, and I guess she said yes, because she made Nimona. Uh, okay. And uh, so it is the tale of uh, a girl who wants to be the sidekick to the kingdom's supervillain. Uh, except that he does not need a sidekick. Uh, she would like to demonstrate her value to this supervillain. And you immediately get the sense that you're not 100% sure he's actually the bad guy. You're not 100% huh. sure this, like... Ministry of Good that they're fighting, like you're not sure they're the good guys. I'm into this. Uh, you're not sure that his deadly enemy slash maybe former best friend slash maybe something else, uh, Golden Loin. Uh, <laughs> Great name. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Uh, you you're you you're like oh there's history here and also she can shape change. I'm. And it's the funniest it thing cal- in the universe and the story is Nimona. amazing and it's called Nimona. It's her name. Uh, and it is written and drawn by Noelle, who has, uh, she also uh, was one of the co-creators of Lumberjanes, and she did the yeah. character designs in a lot of the covers. That's, that's so you've seen where her I know style. Her um, but apply it to this sort of, it's like a fantasy universe with some technology fantasy elements to it. 
Um, okay, because because Lumberjanes was the only thing I, I I really knew of her. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, this is this is this is more money. Seeing spent. you this excited makes me want to stop it doing the show me. and go read it right it's now because I feel awful about the decisions I've made in my life. Like I, it's it's like it's Squirrel Girl level love for me, where okay. I'm like I can't Whoa. explain this Whoa. to you. It's just special. It's just good. Yeah, Whoa. it's just special. And uh, the book is dedicated to all the Monster Girls, which is really special as well um <laughs> it's it's uh, it's just a th i don't know i don't know how this came out so good like it's like a page at a time and then boom the bible like it's weird well and that's uh, i think that's the way steve lichman was it was a page maybe two pages steve lichman is a single a page sing, single page yeah. it's like the, the every 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 interaction is a single page mm -hmm. and then the next page is a single page and mm -hmm. it's the narrative build is beautiful, but no story like like you'll get little run-on stories, but there's always an ending at each page. Yeah. Each page is a definitive end. Can you spell Nimona? Oh, N I M O N A. Okay. Nimona. Um, they're real mad that apparently you abandoned her in hell and haven't read her comic. <sighs> <laughs> You've read her other comics though. It's okay. I have. Yeah. I no. Just... <laughs> Wait, who did you? Ab you didn't abandon? I abandoned a lot of people in hell. To be fair. <laughs> I'm older than I look. Uh, <laughs> Um, ask those any, of us who know you know Ask this. anyone who's left. Yes. Yeah. Um. This is awesome. I did not know. Cole Drake uh, says, and Stevenson started Mona while a student at the Maryland Institute College of Art. The webcomic was first published in June 2012 and doubled as Stevenson's senior thesis. Whoa. That I did not know. Whoa. Like, she's, she's, uh, this is, I've met Noelle and I try not to be weird about it, but like, she's a genius. She's That's... really good. Uh, and like, oh, it's unfair that. for anybody's, like, first graphic novel to be this good. Like, wow. that's weird. Um, and animation has stolen her, but I'm really hoping that we get a lot more Noel books uh, over time. Um, yeah, so that's, that's beautiful. That's that Nimona awesome. front and center, uh, the guy she works for on her one shoulder and Golden Loin on the other. I, I, the Golden Loin was, yeah. <laughs> you had me at Loin. <laughs> golden Loin. Oh, loin. Yeah. Yeah. you had me at Loin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you guys read Autumn Lands by Kurt Busiek? <gasps> I need to catch up on Autumn Lands. It's so I've only, good. I've only read the first like trade. That's about where I am, I think. I get behind uh, on things. But it is, so it's Kurt, uh, is it Busiek? Busiek? I've always said Busiek, but Busiek? I don't know. Uh, Busiek and Ben Dewey. Uh, ben Dewey, who you might know from the tragedy series on Tumblr. Uh, a series of hilarious one-panel uh, cartoons that are a series of tragedies, that varying from amazing. ice cream on ground to d different in scope, but every time a tragedy. Anyway, that, mm -hmm. continue. I, now I need to go look that up. <laughs> uh, so Autumn Lands, Tooth and Claw. What, what is the poem that that comes from? Nature Red and Tooth and Claw. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, anyway um, it's, it's this anthropomorphic animals living in a magical world. It's this magical medieval renaissance world. And they all, I can't remember what it was, there was some cataclysmic sort of thing happening and they used all the magic in the world to try and stop it. And like the aristocrats have all the magic and the poor people don't have the magic. It's a very magic as technology world, but there's also yeah. some sort of like internal strife between like the, the buffalo people that they're grabbing from and, and the, the people who run it and then sort of everything goes wrong. But there's like, there's a big, there's mysterious events in their past mythology yeah. which get revealed by the they like. Slowly revealed, yeah. And they use all of the magic left in the world to summon the creator, like the person who like <laughs> saved the world and gave them magic. And when they summon this incredible magical creature, it's a hairless, naked, pink human. And the great thing about the comic warrior. is like, the world is so well well uh, drawn out that by the time that character arrives, you find him very weird looking. Yeah. Because you're like, you're with this dog boy who's the main character, and you've met the buffalo people, and you're like, there's and the an owl and girl, and, like, yeah. and, and that's that's become your normal, even by the end of like the first issue, such oh, that you're like, what is that? Yeah, so when a, when a human shows up, you're like, what? No! And like, they're all the same. They're like, what? Is, this is the warrior? This is our savior? And it just goes from there. And All he right. doesn't want to be there. The animals don't want him there anymore. But now they're stuck with this situation. And it's really good. I mean, it's Kurt Busiek. It's Kurt Busiek. Yeah. I would yeah. assume, I would hope. Guys, uh, I, I remember 
we're sitting here being like, yeah, it's a real problem when people ask for fantasy recommendations in comics. We come up with nothing, and like, we'll never run out. There's no. so much we're not. We haven't I, even well, gotten was... to Mike Grell's Warlord. Uh, someone says there was a dragon flight that adapted Emma McCaffrey into fantasy. There's a whole question about adaptations of the Raymond Feist books. The Game of Thrones books are getting adaptations. I was, I was a big fan of, of the of the Green Valley image series. Also, tell me about it because oh, I haven't I don't know read anything it yet. About it. So Green Valley. The problem with discussing Green Valley is that. There are twists in Act One that are so twisty that I don't right, want right, to twist right. them. Where you're like the fun part of this was not knowing it was. But coming. I but yeah. I can I can give you the basics, which is which is it's Green Valley is a um, very by its very nature atypical fantasy story of of a group of very male knights, like four knights and they're knights and they're guys and they're they're super they're 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 very broy. They're very good at what they do. They like they fight, fend off the hordes. They have a king. They they have a life. Everything goes to hell. They have they have one bad day and everything goes to hell. And then one day, a kid shows up, and is says you have to come to our village in the Green Valley. There's an evil wizard and a dragon that's terrorizing our our town. And the thing is, there's no such thing as wizards and there's no such things as dragons, and that never stops being true. That's all I'm going to say, is there's a wizard terrorizing the town of Green Valley, and there are no wizards, and there are no dragons. Mm. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, well, it's, and it's a Landis book, so, yeah. it's, so it's, it's structurally, it, it's just, it's got things happening. And I don't want to give away the, okay. insane, the insane twists, but it's, it's a really fun deconstruction of a, of a way of building a fantasy genre without actually building a fantasy genre. It's really fascinating. It's fun. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's it's it watching these these kind of very again, very traditional knight characters get run through the ringer and, and have to sort of come to but terms if there with are themselves. No wizards, how's there's a wizard? I, I'm pretty sure that's the point. That's the ah! you'll see. Is it a VR simulation? Nope. Are they in the Matrix? No nope. twenty questions in this. <laughs> they are knights, they are in Green Green Valley. There's a dragon, there's a wizard. But dragons and wizards don't, don't exist. exist. Holograms. Yeah. That's all oh I'm going to say. Calling it I'm just going to start shouting things. Shout, shout a few more uh, before we get I to question. I hate Fairyland. <laughs> what? Oh, God, I forgot about it. I... Oh, oh it's, it's so go. good. Scotty Young's completely messed up evisceration of, like, he, he oh, adapted the it. Oz books for years. Yeah. Um, and so he's, like, an incredibly talented illustrator. Obviously, he does all the cute baby versions of Marvel superheroes, and he's just great. Um, and I guess he had a lot of pent-up energy, uh, and he's doing it about this uh, wow. girl who's been stuck in a fantasy in Fairyland for years and hates it. And, yeah. Uh, is, so it's, it's Interview with a Vampire. Part, that character, uh, like oh, she wow. gets. Oh wow! Look at that cover. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. she. It's bloody. It's not. She wishes she could go to Fairyland, when she's a little girl, gets to Fairyland, but then can't escape Fairyland. So she's like this 35-year-old girl stuck, or <laughs> woman stuck in, uh, stuck in the girl of a, uh, the body of a little girl. That's. And she, all she wants to do is is. GTFO fairy. We haven't even gotten to the stuff we planned, which is that like you guys need to uh, yell at me every week until I read Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard. Because really? I was Mouse a Red Guard? Wall kid, I was obsessed, Mouse. and I haven't read Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard's amazing. It's a really really fun read. You gotta I've read, read Mouse, Mouse Guard. Guard. How have you not read Mouse Guard? You've read a lot of comics. What the it's so good. It's so it looks really it's good. So good. It's, really good. Alley. it's so good. Oh, it looks beautiful. Does Stardust it count so as a comic good. book? Stardust is always yeah. on. It's an illustrated book, but it's a really yeah, fun, like, it's like West, right? Uh, yeah, it's got, it's got that. Oh, yeah, look at lots of text. Uh, no, no, no talk bubbles. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like. No, no, yell no. at you like it's just like it seems like mouse a guard. I love that you're surprised that you've read a thing though. Uh, no, that was but like it's just like like mouse mm -hmm. guard typically isn't I really like. I need to read mouse guard. It's like an adorable, cute animals. Like that's With not weapons. you know like mm -hmm. it's so up your alley. Someone like, points out Dragon Age has a book now. A lot yeah. of love for Battle Chasers in chat, which really battle sits chasers. on this like intersectional line of Western and other kinds of fantasy. Um, Who doesn't uh, love Battle the, Chasers? There were apparently Forgotten Realms comics, which I haven't Forgotten. read. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's actually, the World of Warcraft comics are quite good. Yeah. There's some good stuff in there. Monstrous I, I, is a, another of these, like, you could spend a long time talking about what whether that counts as yeah. Western fantasy or Eastern fantasy or an interpretation of both. throwing that into the rundown to bring up, yeah. but, like, I didn't, I was like, I don't know if it counts. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. What does count is Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard's amazing. Mouse Guard is amazing. God. Oh, somebody I it, somebody about just that put book. Lumberjanes in this, and I was like, oh, right, there's monsters in Lumberjanes. Um, but monsters does not necessarily Tolkien, Tolkien make. Tolkien, Tolkien That's a good make. point. I was stealing your quote Tol from Tolkienian. Earlier. Should we do the five-minute topic? We should, do we have that? We should topic. probably you do that. You want to know what we got? 
You yeah. Now I don't. That was really scary. <laughs> Do I have to kill my kid? Again? What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we doing? <laughs> Every week we take one of your. Do you, oh, okay. Right. So, Do I get to kill a kid this time? I don't know. <laughs> Not this time. Every week we take uh, one of your suggestions from chat and we talk for five minutes, usually one minute each and like two minutes of, of general tomfoolery, about a topic that you suggest. And this week's topic. <gasps> Agenda Flair asks. Topic, you are going to be transported to a fantasy realm and you have to fill the following roles with existing superheroes to bring with you. Oh, this is awesome. Fighter, tank, mage, cleric, and rogue. Fi What's okay, your so team? Okay, so five. So fighter, fighter tank, tank, cleric, cleric mage, rogue. rogue. Fighter, I'm gonna go X-Men. Um, my, my, oh. I'm gonna go X-Men. My, my fighter is, is easy, that's Wolverine. That's no, mm -hmm. uh, um, oh. my cleric, um, I would actually say for my cleric, I'm going to go with um, Iceman. R weirdly helpful for a cleric because you can use the ice powers to like heal wounds and like put them together. Uh, fighter, cleric, mage. Uh, ooh, I need to use a mutant. That's tricky. No, um, technically, Storm would be my mage. She's like a weather. She's like a weather mage. Okay. That works for that. Even even though I know she did the Asgardian thing. That's a um, effect. Uh, <laughs> that's fighter, cleric, mage, rogue, and tank and rogue. Tank. tank and rogue. My tank. That's easy. That's Colossus. Colossus, Colossus yeah. is always your tank. That's just yeah. Like, although you know, it just be fun. Strong guy. Forget it. Guido. I'm going right. Guido the strong Guido guy. Carabella. He's got right. the best hair in Marvel. Uh, and rogue. I'm not going rogue for my rogue. Well, why would you? She's why would I? Rogue. Rogue's not a good rogue. Isn't that weird? Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler's the rogue to end all not rogues. Gambit? Nightcrawler. No, I agree, but like Gambit is Gambit a dresses rogue. like a rogue, but he's not like he's roguish, but like only in character. If like actually put to the test of like being that way, I think he would just pale and consider can, like I think I would like to he's all bluster. I would like to point out you did not choose magic as your God damn it. <laughs> I, th I was like, Ileana Rasputin, how did you not? <laughs> ah, uh, fair. Let's, okay. Uh, uh, okay, let's, do you, do you have yours yet? Because uh, I can. Well, now I'm curious if, like, I, I, so my rogue is going to be Kitty. I'm stealing Kitty because sure. she's sneaky. No, she is sure. sneaky. Um, she's not so much with the DPS, but, you know. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, and you didn't take Ileana, so she'll be my maid. Ooh. Yeah. Burn. She's kind of. More of a warlock, but whatever. Uh, I see a new mutants build happening. All right. I mean, why not, right? Uh, so my fighter could be Wolfsbane. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'll take Wolfsbane nice. for my fighter. Uh, my tank would, of course, be Cannonball. And for my cleric, I'm just gonna cheat and take. I think his name's Elixir, but he's actually got healing powers. So yeah, yeah. cheating crap. Good, is he the gold Good guy? Call. Yeah. He's Good the gold call. guy. That's right. God, man, you just did a new mutant good team. All it right. turns out Claremont's good at his job and was wow. probably uh, a D&D nerd. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to, since you guys did X-Men, I'm going to pull from Avengers. Okay. All right. Uh, fighter, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Solid. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to come back to Cleric. Mage, Doctor Strange. I have, yeah. like, I okay. have to. I yeah, no. I have to. I'm sorry. I have to. He is, he is. Um, tank. Uh, I, um, ooh. Uh, Hulk. Duh. Okay. She, easy. I'm an easy. Peasy. Easy. How did yeah. I? How did I Tank almost? Smash. Tank smash. Uh, let's see. Okay. So mage. Uh, I need a good rogue. Um, Hawkeye's not really a rogue. Who's roguish? He's but no, rogue he's not a rogue. Ish. Jack of Hearts doesn't like. Do he was a terrible no, no, choice. No, I'm not helping. I'm not helping. Uh, no. Uh, oh God, I've got two minutes. I'm so bad at this. Cleric, uh, Night Nurse. I'm just gonna go with Night Nurse. Perfect. Lovely. Solid. Right. Yes. Like. Uh, uh, so I just I just I just need a, a good rogue from the Avengers roster. Yeah. Uh, can I phone a friend? Can I? Can what I? What uh, element of the the rogueness do you are like you doing? Like Like thieving. Like n like secrecy. Vision. Vision. Vision can can. Second can, Ant Man. Can do things. And Ant Man. <gasps> Good Ooh. call. I mean, Scott Lang is my right. There, and he is a thief but, too. Yeah. yeah. He's Amy answered that not, question not for quite me. Not quite irredeemable. <laughs> no, I don't want to go with the irredeemable. No, he's, he's he's terrible. Okay, but yeah. now we have to make a DC team because we're being very unfair. Yeah, that is Canary Fighter, Fighter, right? I can go. Good I can choice. Go, I can go Canary Fighter. Great choice. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm behind that. Superman is the tank. I'll take it. Superman is the tank. Um. Crap, I didn't leave room for Wonder Woman on this team, but whatever. She's no, there somewhere. No, it's okay. It's, well, we've got... Uh, is Doctor Fate a mage? <laughs> hmm? Is Doctor Fate our mage? Doctor Fate may be our mage. That's pretty solid. God, this team is just so OP already. Um, I'm thinking so about... So we need a cleric and a rogue, yeah? Rogue? Rogue, I want to go... Ooh, no, no, no. Mm. Nightwing? Batman? I think Nightwing is better than Batman for a rogue. 
Yeah? Yeah, you want someone who, like, Batman's too like, this is how things are done, whereas, whereas Nightwing's like, I can do that stuff. Or we could do like, yeah, like, I, I would be down for that. Okay. Who's, who's, oh. our, who's our cleric? Who's our cleric? Who's our healer? <sighs> Satana. Satana. But is is she a cleric or is she more of a she, Well, she's more she of a could probably, she could, She's double dual do, class. Dual class. <laughs> she can be some dual we class. We've got 30 seconds left. I, maybe we, I, she could do a class, sure. I, I, but. I can't think of any straight healers in the DCU. Like, I'm trying to think oh, of people who are be. just, just uh, purely, purely defensive. Would the Flash be a good rogue? He's that would be an fast. interesting way interesting to go with take. that, actually. In kind of a 1402 kind of vibe. You want to yeah. sneak up, backstab kind of abilities. Oh, yeah. Flash is That's your guy. Flash is your guy. He's not going to want to, but he could. And he Green, could. Green Lantern is a great mage, also, I might add. Green Lantern is totally a mage. That's would he so be a cool. good cleric? Because mm. he's very defensive. And we're out of time. And we're out of time. Ah. All right. Guys, thank you so Chat, much for checking us, us out. Uh, for for checking TV. us out, you can, uh, you can catch us every Wednesday, uh, 7 to 9, uh, 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 twitch.tv, Geek yeah. and Sundry, or and on Project Alpha. Alpha. So there we are. Thank you Thanks for, for the question, Argentum Flair. Thank you. That was a really good question. That was a really fun one. We, we want to keep the going. Second, the second it was asked, I was like, well, Dr. Shanger's my mage. Where do I go from there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> great suggestions in chat. Aqualad, Raven, Poison Ivy, uh, Swamp Thing, oh. uh, Alfred, Best Cleric, Raven again. Uh, somebody wants Raven. Scarecrow, which I was thinking I, Raven too. Mm, sca mm. Terrifying. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't mm. know. Actually, a, a chaotic evil team would be interesting to put together too. Oh, you're Villain, right. Villains unite. Yeah. We do have to wrap up in a minute, though. We do. Oh, we, have, no. we have like a minute that we need to wrap out on because we have to start getting ready for, for Shield of Tomorrow. Shield of Tomorrow. Shield of Tomorrow has to happen, <laughs> and like right in this very space yep. where we have to transform yep. it into the set of Shield of Tomorrow. Uh. Do we do we know what we're talking about next week? We had talked about it. Do you we, want to do that? We're narrowing down. What we're, our narrow, we're narrowing down. I'm gonna ha I'm I'm gonna try and make it so we can announce maybe on a if, if we'll figure it out and hopefully announce on a uh, what's that other show that I'm on? Critical Role. Critical Role. So yeah, yeah you do that show too. Crit Role. Crit Role. Uh, and so. we should, either way, we should be able to point you all in the direction of some reading for next week. But please keep uh, throwing the wonderful fantasy suggestions at each other yeah. and us because this has been wow, so much fun. Topic. This was, yeah, this is a much bigger, thicker, like the more and more I got into it, the more I was like, oh, there's a lot. I knew there would be, but I was like, I was like, God, like off the top of my head, I'm not sure yeah. how far. I'm looking forward to a Western episode, too. Of, like, too we didn't about, even get into like Michael yeah, Moorcock and Elric. Oh. Uh, we didn't uh, even get into the article I found that was specifically just great fantasy comics from the year 2016. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, oh, thank you for that. There was an entire out. list just from just last from, year. Just from last um, year. It is an amazing time in comics, y'all. Uh, There's so much to right, read. Well, There's too much to read. We need to wrap it up. So, I ha I am the Mackey. Uh, you can write um, the, you can, that's where, my Twitter. Where, where, where can, where can, they, we can find you at, at the Mackey? At the Mackey. That's my Twitter. Do you Come. Instagram? I'm bad at it. Okay, I'm just checking. Java Shambhala, if you want to follow me on Instagram, where I never take pictures. No photographs. I'm real bad. I'm real bad at social it's a, media. It's a minimalist. I'm uh, real, Instagram. real bad. <laughs> I'm uh, Talis and Jaffe. You can find me as Executive Goth on Twitter and Instagram. I also, I haven't been taking pictures lately. Maybe I'll, I'll pick that up. Yeah, though. we should pick that up. I should. You can find me at Enthusiami everywhere. And uh, make sure that you have checked out Critical Role Box Machina Origins number one. Thank you. Ba, 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 it's so good. Be, 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 I be, 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 actually be, be, laughed out loud. You know, like, sing so much. Ah. So Your awesome. Question we got. Yeah. How does it feel to have your, to be in a comic? I don't even know how it feels. It's so weird. It's, it's crazy. Amazing. I love it. It's so strange. It's you. you made them up with your brain. It's just like a sack there and things are happening. It's so crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Uh, and yeah, and it, it's crazy. And and they should see you. You're, they should stick around. You should stick around. Stick around for Shield tomorrow. Shield tomorrow comes uh, up next. We have discovered a very interesting place on Star Trek. Uh, we crash landed onto it, as most of the most interesting places uh, arise. Uh, and wish us luck. All right, Connect that's our show. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everybody. Wednesday.